I encountered what I believed was Bigfoot on two separate occasions. My first experience was when I was young. My parents had me in a very small private Christian school in rural Maine. I had roughly six classmates and only one was my age, the teacher's son. One day, we were running around outside, racing, playing with rocks and things of that nature. Normal 7 to 10 year old boy stuff. Now, out back of the church there was a very large clearing which I assumed at the time was to make room for additions, but me and my buddy, we'll call him Josh, always liked to mess around back there as the earth was extremely uneven. Little divots to hide in and plenty of rocks to flip over and discover salamanders. On this particularly warm afternoon we were nearing the tree line when we both smelled something foul. We scoured the area for potential dead animals and found next to nothing. As we neared the center of the field Josh stopped in his tracks and just stared at the tree line. Frozen with fear. I called out his name a couple times and he just turned and ran telling me to run. I looked in the direction that made him flee and saw a very tall, upright human figure walking between trees with its face following him. Hair covered its body. I too took off and never went back. Our parents of course said we saw a bear, but we know what we saw was no bear. Fast forward to 2012, I've since married, have a child and have enlisted in the US Navy. I was stationed in the Pacific Northwest and I've heard the stories, but heeded none of the warnings low. My wife scoured the internet one weekend for an easy hike. Our daughter wasn't really old enough to walk so we decided to bring a stroll. In going to be honest, I don't remember the exact location but I do know that it was off the beaten path. We pulled up to the trailhead and saw a couple of people very swiftly get into their vehicle, almost panicked and sped off. My wife and I dismissed it as they were in a hurry to get somewhere so we continued, business as usual. We began down the path and almost immediately started getting an uneasy feeling. Mutually we agreed audibly that something was off. About five minutes deep into this actually rough path, the stroller was a bad decision. We heard a blood-curdling scream which sounded like a woman, but not quite human, deep in the woods to our left. My wife and I looked at each other friend. Time to go. I grabbed my daughter and my wife grabbed the stroller, and we took off. We heard the scream moments later, but this time it was much closer and now we were hearing something very large trudging through the woods, but we couldn't see anything. We slowed down to listen trying desperately to keep our location hidden despite the fact that we felt like we were being watched. Now, the thing moving in the woods was coming from different directions without warning. We could not pinpoint it as to keep eyes in that direction. As we paused briefly again it seemed the woods stood still, no sounds not even birds chirping. We felt like this was our opportunity to barrel out of there. We took off, we were close to the trailhead anyway. Not seconds after our borderline sprint a massive boulder, probably 100 pounds, launched across the trail as if by slingshot bouncing off the massive trees. We tried to see where it came from as there were no hills but to no avail. We kept moving and only noticed the down tree that was in the walking path that wasn't there previously after we got into our vehicle and took off. Were these humans messing with us? My wife and I didn't wait to find out. It was terrifying and I doubt we will ever know the truth. This happened when I was about two years old, so around 1977. My grandma's cabin was out in the Cascade foothills in eastern Washington state, near, 12 miles, the town of Twist. It was winter, with temps well below freezing and around two to three feet of frozen snow on the ground. My grandfather had gone hunting recently and the overflow that did not fit in the freezer was stored outside on the enclosed back porch under some galvanized steel watering troughs that were upside down to protect them. Granny heard a loud crash like one of the troughs being thrown over. Grandpa hit the porch light switch and a huge crash shook the house. He grabbed a gun and ran outside thinking it may be a bear or something. The trough was in the yard, that was the first noise Granny heard. The second noise in the house shaking turned out to be a 4 by 4 inch porch support pillar that got snapped in half like a twig when Whatever it was ran straight through. There were bare human-shaped footprints 18 inches long leading away into the dark. My dad had my mom, sister, and myself there by 8 a.m. the next morning, 
a five to six hour drive in wind. This story has been told to me at various times of my life by my mom, dad and grandmother, all at different times, it's always the same. My dad and grandpa followed the tracks to the river, where they lost it, because it traveled in the shallow water so as not to be tracked. The trail was littered with the wrapping my grandma had wrapped the meat in. It was not torn open, as would be expected, but apparently looked to have been carefully unwrapped. The dogs, one which was half shepherd slash half coyote were too scared to pursue. My grandmother always mentioned the awful smell as well, that lingered around the porch area for a short while after. According to my dad, this thing was big and heavy, the footprints were sunk so deep in the frozen snow, that he could not even match the depth by jumping from the porch roof. Some federal agency or investigators took the hair samples that were left on the 4x4 and I've been told that the test results showed no known animal. Keep in mind this was the late 70s, so not real high tech. I have seen the plaster casts of the footprints with my own eyes. They have always struck me as the most authentic I have seen. Not because it was my family's story, but because of the one toe. One big toe on one foot. It sticks out at a funny angle, like it was broken and not set correctly before it healed. That seems hard and pointless to fake, just to fool a couple living out in the woods. Especially in 1977. In Washington. Right? Well that's seriously the short version. There is a lot more detail but would take a lot longer to write up. What do you all think of Granny's encounter with, something? She has always been convinced it was Sasquatch. Why I believe in Bigfoot, a personal experience I was in a wilderness program in 2004 when I was 17 and supposed to hike from point A to point B with 11 other kids but someone got hurt, and we hiked straight down the mountain to the first flat clearing we could find so a helicopter could pick up the hurt boy. We camped in an area that was miles from our intended destination, far off the beaten path. When we woke up the next morning there were, what appeared to be, Bigfoot prints running through the middle of the camp and a tuft of orange slash brown slash gray hair stuck to a tree branch that was thicker and coarser than anything any of us had ever seen before. I had an experience in June of 2004 and never thought about it again until a few years ago when I came across my journal entry from that time. Once I read it, everything came flooding back and has become the foundation for my personal belief in Bigfoot. To help you understand why I feel so strongly about their existence, I need to explain why I was in the middle of the wilderness, to begin with. I grew up in an affluent part of southern Orange County, California, and began abusing drugs pretty early, too much time plus too much money equals bad habits, on so I was what you would consider a troubled teen. Right after I turned 17 in April of 2004 I got sent to a wilderness rehabilitation program called Aspen Achievement Academy based out of Lowell, Utah, about 3-4 to four hours south of Salt Lake City. After I changed clothes and received gear, I was transported by van to this big open area off a long dirt road and then someone walked me another half hour or so to meet my group. I don't know many specifics about where we camped or where we hiked throughout the entirety of the program, as they never really told us much at all. We didn't have contact with anyone other than our group leaders and a therapist that would come periodically. I was in this program, in the middle of the wilderness, always at least 2.5 to 3 hours and many miles away from civilization, for 52 days. We would hike from water source to water and we were resupplied every 8 days when the staff changed over. I was in the wilderness for a total of my 52 days in that program. I do know two locations we hiked to, a place called Ledge Lake that was on the edge of a huge cliff probably 300 to 400 feet above the forest floor below, looking south, and I also know we hiked and camped at a place called Miller Creek Cove. So, all I know was that we were somewhere in the southern Utah wilderness most of, if not, the entire time. Oh, also, we had to write a one-page journal entry every day before dinner and it is this journal I found more recently that reminded me of the incident. On June 11, 2004, day 35 of my program, we had a 10-mile hike planned to reach the next water source. We never hiked longer than one full day without making it to a place we could fill our Nalgene bottles. We only carried what we needed, 
We were literally in the middle of the wilderness and could not physically carry non-essential items, even if we wanted to. During this particular hike, one of the other kids named Robbie, hurt his knee really bad traversing the side of this mountain so we had to change course and basically bushwhack straight down the mountain from where we were to find a clearing where we could set up camp. Everyone divvied up Robbie's knee, plus two other guys so they could carry him down. When the ground leveled out at the bottom we came to a trail. Think less hiking trail and more game, animal, trail. The trail came to a T and where we came down was basically at the top of the T. We hung our food bags 25 to 30 yards to the right and we made camp about 50 yards further down the trail at the bottom of the T path on both sides of the trail. The forest was really dense, you could never really see further than about 25 to 30 yards because of how many trees there were but there was enough of a clearing along this path that all 12 of us could spread out on either side of the trail and make a shelter out of our tarp and floor. When we woke up the next morning, I wrote in my journal later that night on June 12, 2004, there were these crazy big footprints going through the site and hair was found high up in a tree about shoulder height. I remember, specifically, the footprints were at least the length of my elbow to the tips of my fingers. I was fully grown at 6 feet 0 inches when I was 17 so looking at my arm now it would have had to have been about 18 inches long and maybe 6 inches wide. I don't remember it looking any different than the shape of a normal human foot, just freaking gigantic. Knowing what I know now, I would have documented the crap out of it and measured every toe and ridge and everything. I remember the gate was large enough that I felt like I was halfway doing the splits to reach each one and we were all laughing about it. Another thing I remember was how hard packed the trail was and that none of us, including the staff, 200 plus pounds dudes, could make an impression in the dirt even remotely close to as deep as these giant footprints were. Deep enough that the ground looked like it was soft when the footprint was made and then it dried completely hard as a rock in the morning by the time we found them but it didn't rain at all that night before and they weren't there when we got there the afternoon before. The footsteps went from the bottom of the tee and then made a right toward the hanging food bags. Another 15 feet or so past the food bags, one of our counselors reached up and grabbed a tuft of hair that was stuck to a branch on the left side. My journal entry says it was shoulder height but I remember him physically reaching up to grab it. I can't explain this discrepancy other than I either wrote it wrong then or I am remembering it wrong now. In hindsight, I wish I would have smelled the hair and kept some of it. Anything more than having 15 minutes of wow, that's weird and then moving on and forgetting about it. I remember the hair was a light orange slash brown but with lots of gray in it. Like an aging ginger's beard. I remember it was much more coarse and wiry than anything I had ever seen in my life. I wish I would have freaking smelled it just to have another sensory memory of the whole thing. That quote I put in the paragraph above is the only thing in the journal entry about it. I'm sure I had heard of Bigfoot before this happened but I wasn't into any of that sort of stuff, cryptozoology, conspiracies, etc. UFOs I've been into since childhood, from watching X-Files in the early 90s until in my mid-20s so it is reasonable to me that I only wrote that one sentence about how crazy it was and then left it at that. Another strange thing from that morning, that may be unrelated but is also crazy, is that there was a large tree in the clearing where we set up camp, and while we were looking at the footprints, another kid noticed these super deep claw marks going up the trunk. At the time, we thought maybe a mountain lion or something similar was up the tree, stalking us overnight because we were in their territory or something. The claw marks were narrow, maybe half an inch wide and at the deepest point maybe an inch and a half or two deep and they were still fresh with the green of the aspen tree underneath. I'd like to think that whatever it was scrambled up the tree when Bigfoot came walking through our camp and maybe Bigfoot even saved one of us from being eaten or attacked at night. That's just me letting my imagination run with it, though. I don't even know if these two things are related, whatsoever, they just both happened around the same time and it's cool to think about. One last thing. I remember one of the counselors, Shane, maybe Sean, said he had a friend that was some kind of scientist and did something with wild animals but I don't know in what capacity or anything more he was going to take the hair we found over to him to have him look at. The next week when Sean came back, 
8 days on, 6 days off schedule for counselors. All he said was that he gave it to said friend, and the friend stated he had never seen anything like it and would get back to it. Nothing more, nothing less, I never asked for any follow-up beyond that and none of it ever entered my brain again until I found my journal and read them. We picked my friend up. His name is going to be Greg for privacy reasons. We started our way up to the mountains. Greg and I were talking on what we do up there and having fun for an entire week. As we got there it was around noon. My mom made sandwiches for lunch and kicked us out for the rest of the day. As we were trying to find something fun to do, we proceeded to grab sticks and pretend we were in some call of duty. As it started to get colder and the sun was about to set, I showed Greg where the tree house was. The tree house was just a platform formed with two by four holding it up. Three trees on each corner, with an opening where a makeshift ladder was. As we were sitting there, we were talking about school and things that were going on there. All of a sudden Greg stopped talking. I felt an odd feeling fill my body. I looked where Greg was looking at. I saw a creature that stood 8 to 9 feet tall. The afternoon sun hit just right to show the fur all over its body. Except the face area. As it poking its head back behind, and around the tree. I looked at Greg hey what are I started to say as he gets up and jumps off of the tree house. I sit there and look at the creature that moved to a different tree closer to me. Fear hits my body and my eyes started to water. As I watch this, this thing peering right back. As I'm looking at it I swear I see another one about 20 yards away from the first one. I didn't want to be here anymore. So I decided to keep looking at it and scoot my butt over to the edge. As I see the other one running to another tree, I jump. I pick myself up and sprint towards where Greg sprinted up to. As I ran I hear it. Run it's behind you. I try to run faster and I hear load thumps behind me. I get in front of the cabin to the clearing of the woods. I'm breathing heavy same with Greg. We look back and see the two silhouettes stare right back at us. I don't know if they were curious or what. I'm glad we didn't find out. What do you guys think IT was? What was watching me pee in the Ozarks? Okay this is probably going to be a BS story because I am on mobile and I have had a long hard day on the road getting out of the Ozarks being stuck on side the road towing a 20k load on a holiday weekend. Sorry if I butcher grammar or anything else I do annoy. Rough weekend but I want to make sure I document this while it's fresh in my mind. Okay so I am an owner slash operator traveling industrial electrician. I also feel for relevance to the story I should mention I am a woman. My job takes me everywhere so being somewhere in the middle of nowhere with strange sounds and critters kinda comes with the territory. So does poor bathroom accommodations. So a couple weeks ago we jumped on a quick turnaround, four weeks, at a something new to me, a plant that breaks down and processes utility grade meats. This is the stuff that goes into dog food and potted meat all that wonderful stuff. This is in the uppermost corner of NW Arkansas, north of Fayetteville. It stinks so bad in this place and it's still running while I am there to do the electrical on one of four new process lines. Now this is a large addition, basically a new wing of the building. They do not have a sufficient number of porto lets and the one they do have they claim haven't been cleaned in a while because the crane is in the way, speechless face, and to spitty the fact the site has the equipment to move the toilet so they won't be blocked that doesn't mean they are doing it. So I make a deal with the boss that I will be using the bathroom, for number two, at the country store about seven miles from site. I noticed the chemical building was set a good distance behind the plant, very typical placement. Behind that they had a slab with a condenser then a patch of grass on a downslope that lead to a four chain link fence I could walk around and access a patch of woods with about four to five of gentle slope before a steep drop off of about 40 and about 20 after the flat ground there was a lovely field. Perfect place to be. So for the first week I was in a walk-in ceiling above the boiler room and peed in a bottle mostly. I did go to the woods patch a couple times to pee but everything was normal. The first time it got strained was in the second week, I crossed the fence to pee on the gentle slope patch before the drop off and something just came over me not to let my ass face the drop off, Ike it was weird, like the sensation of being watched. 
I stood there and scoped it out to see if maybe another plant worker was there to take a leap but there was not. Odd whatever back to work. I came out later that day to pee and still felt I wasn't alone. The feeling of being watched continued, and I just kinda did my business faced my ass away from the woods and went back to work. Until sometime in the third week it was early in the morning I was peeing in my spot in the woods and suddenly something let loose. It was the unmistakable sound of a large heavy body falling down the incline. I heard the leaves crunching, the tumbling sound rolling down the hill. I jumped up in midstream scrambling to pull my curds out. I spun around in the direction of the noise to see what it was. It took me a second of scanning and the only thing I can see that didn't look normal was a black lump at the bottom of the incline near a large rock. I stood for a moment observing thinking it was possibly a bear, but this thing was perfectly still and no matter how long I looked at it I couldn't make out a discernible shape. It also didn't move like I was convinced whatever it was it wasn't breathing because of how still it was. I shrugged it off and went back to work. I spent the next couple days walking the distance to the field I parked my truck to pee at. I just was not in the mood to go back to those woods. Eventually I broke down and went back to pee in the woods. I ignored the feeling of being watched faced out into the woods down the slope my whole time out there and put pep in my step getting out of there. I repeated this for a couple day until one evening late in the day I went to pee but this time as soon as I rounded the corner of the chemical building this wave just washed over me. It was like when I rounded that corner every instinctual alarm was telling me get the F out of here right now. Of course as a stupid human I ignored this instinctual warning and still went to pee. For some reason I refused to face the downslope this time. There was like a voice in my head assuring me don't look back. Thankfully I finished peeing with no incident and my phone rings which legit startled me. It was my husband looking for me, we work together, I tell him hang on because I hear the noise of something splashing loudly in the creek. I turn around and to this day I still cannot explain what I saw, it just doesn't remotely resemble anything of this world. I am going to do my best to describe it, okay you know those Muppets on Sesame Street whose appendages would stretch out and come back in, Imagine one of those but all black, Vonda black, but very fuzzy looking just like the Muppets on Sesame Street. It ran in a bipedal fashion but its legs would slink out and get long as it stepped. Image something black and fuzzy with two flailing fuzzy slinkies for legs running with matching arms flailing in a similar manner. In its locomotion its skinny fuzzy body and neck kinda expanded and wobbled up and down. It was just running west and cut across the creek and without breaking stride ran up on the bank. I was kinda in awe for a moment, my mind couldn't process what it was seeing. Finally I frantically muttered to my husband it's wrong something is really wrong I need you. Dropped my phone where I was standing and ran back into the unit. I ended up running into my husband when I got up the stairs from the boiler room, I must have looked pretty bad because he grabbed me shaking me a little demanding to know what was wrong. I couldn't really explain it to him what I saw at the time, all I could get out was the black thing in the woods. My husband insisted I show him so I took him around back of the chemical building to show him. The atmosphere wasn't the same it was much lighter nothing like before. My husband looked around saw my phone on the ground went and got it and looked down the drop off. Nothing, my husband looked at the phone, gave me a strange look and handed me my phone. He asked me again that night what happened. But when I made efforts to describe what I saw he seemed to get frustrated. He kept trying to compare it to known animals, like a monkey, bear, dog but I told him it wasn't even close. I never went to pee there again the rest of the time I was on that job. Can anyone tell me what I could have possibly saw was? Like seriously what did I see? What the hell was that thing? The Salt Creek Monster. Lived near Lincoln, Illinois. Lincoln is pretty centrally located in central Illinois. It is 30 miles from the state capital, Springfield, 35 miles each from Bloomington Normal, Peoria, and Decatur. It has a population of about 12,000. I am now 50 years old, but when I was a little boy of 3 to 4, me and my family had an encounter with the Salt Creek Monster. If you live in central Illinois that is pronounced Creek not Creek Roll. At that time we lived out in the country less than one quarter of a mile from Salt Creek. This was two miles outside an extremely small little village, 
Kenny, Illinois. My mother witnessed it cross the road right before the bridge that crossed Salt Creek. My brothers had been down there night fishing and placing out night lines. My mom drove down to the bridge to get the boys and tell them to get back up to the house. It was almost 10 p.m. and they weren't going to be allowed to stay out there all night. One of my brothers told my mom they had seen big Her not believing them told them, well, you two boys get in the car and come on home. They told her they had to gather their fishing poles and gear and to please wait while they got it and they would walk back up to the house. She agreed and waited while they did that and they started back down the road. One of my brothers was on foot and one on his bike. As they took off, she drove on toward the bridge to turn around on a little gravel drive, right before the bridge. She had her driver's side window down. As she got to the drive, a horrible smell of garbage, mixed with rotten sewage water, practically smacked her in the face through the window. In the headlights a six-foot-tall, man-shaped thing, crossed in the headlights from one side of the road to the other. It was light gray and completely hair-covered. It looked directly at the car as it passed by. She said, she'll never forget those glowing yellow eyes. She said she had the hair on her arm's neck, and had it all stood on end, and she's never felt that scared since. She turned into the drive, on the right side of the road, and slammed the gear shift into reverse, quickly doing a three-point turn to go back away from the bridge, and back up the road to the house. As she went toward the house, this thing was running down the road. It was a full moon that night. The boys had been looking back as they went to see where mom was, and they saw this huge, muscular, man-shaped thing running in their direction. They later said they looked back because this thing must have weighed a lot because they felt it running on the paved country road before they saw it. My brother that was on foot was scared so bad. He passed my other brother on his bicycle, running. Mom was freaked out because it looked like it was going after the boys. She swerved over at the creature, and it jumped off the right side of the road, down 15 feet into the deep ditch and let out a blood-curdling scream. Everyone got back up to the house, quickly got into the house, and locked all the doors and windows. They later said they could hear it walking around the house. It was thudding into the ground, and breathing loudly as it went by windows. My sister and her best friend were sleeping out in a camper that fit into the bed of a pickup truck. They heard something walk up to the camper and circle it five to six times. They could hear deep, heavy breathing and the dog that was scared of nothing under the truck whined. It slapped the side of the camper and rattled the doorknob. The two of those girls stayed completely still and even held their breath. They were trying to be so quiet. After what seemed like forever, but in reality was probably 30 to 40 seconds, they finally heard, whatever it was, they never looked out any window to see, something thud off in the direction of Salt Creek. Sometime later, they heard something, off in the distance, in the same direction, they heard the thing, that only moments before had been circling their camp. Screech. My Bigfoot encounter. So back in 07 I was 8 years old. Me and my grandparents lived up on a mountain in northern Georgia in Floyd County and our property was against the Bardo County. It's a warm September night just a couple days after my birthday. I'm up in my room playing Call of Duty on my Wii and my grandpa walks in and asks if I can take the trash out before it gets too cold. I say sure and pause my game and slip my shoes on. I walk out into the garage and open the garage door to throw the bag into my grandpa's truck. I turn on the light on the outside of the garage and walk to my grandpa's truck. Me being 8 years old at the time I was afraid of the dark, so I kind of sped walked and throw the bag in and hoped to make it. However, I did not make it, and I hear the bag land on the ground behind the truck. My head drops and my heart starts to pound for some reason like I know if I go behind the truck something will get me, you know the basic 8 year old paranoia. So I run to the back of the truck pick the bag up and toss it inside and turn around to go back into the garage when I see something. The way my driveway is it turns off a gravel road that curves to the left and up the hill. The hill smooths out a little but doesn't level off completely. Right where the hill gets less steep I see a dark figure just standing there. In the light coming from the garage I can just make out its silhouette. 
It appears to be a person at first but then my eyes adjust on it and I can vaguely make out hair covering its entire body. I stand there frozen with fear like if I turn my back it's gonna sprint up and get me. So I hesitantly walk backwards toward the garage while keeping my eyes on it, and it seems that every step I take it takes one also. I finally reach the hole where the garage door is placed and run as fast as I can inside. When I get inside I run into the living room for my grandpa and say grandpa, get the gun to reach something in the driveway, it's big and it's walking on two feet. I don't know what it is but it scares me. So my grandpa get the gun and we go outside on the front porch which is a good 40 yards closer to the part of the hill I saw it at and it's not there. My grandpa says you sure you saw something? I don't say anything. I just nod. He drops the gun from his shoulder and says to me, you haven't put a new trash bag in the trash can. We both turn around and walk back inside. Several hours go by and nothing else happens. Until about 1 a.m. I wake up from having a dream of what I saw. I lay in my bed and look at my curtain windows and can see that the front porch light is on. I find that safer because it acts as sort of a nightlight for me. So I'm laying there looking at my window when I see a huge shadow walk right in front of my window on the outside. And I mean huge. The window sat about two feet off the ground, was about four foot tall and was about two and a half feet from the ceiling. And this shadow was tall enough to cast a shadow big enough to where it looked like someone was sliding a wall past the window. I could hear the boards creaking out on the front porch and could see how wide this thing was from the side view. This thing, whatever it was, was at least two feet wide from the side. And it was absolutely huge. I didn't want to go get my grandparents because I didn't want them to get mad for waking them up at 1 a.m. and for them to come out and see nothing. So I just watched this thing walk back and forth past my window and before too long I fell asleep again. Fast forward to the summer between my sophomore and junior year in high school. I had moved off the mountain but was still going to the same school. Anyway like a week before school got out, me and my best friend Kevin thought it might be a good idea to go up to the mountain and see if we can find it. Without hesitation I jumped at the opportunity and said hell yeah let's go. So the following weekend after school ended, I meet up with him and we brought some camping gear along with some food and a 30 to 06. I tell him we can camp out at the house I saw this thing at and he agreed it was the best place to start. So we make it to the night and Hess like yo, let's get out and walk around I say okay and we both get out of the tent. I instantly felt like I was being watched. I shouldered the rifle and I felt the adrenaline filling my veins. Kevin puts his hand on the barrel and lowers the end of the gun to the ground. Don't do that, you'll make me nervous. So we start walking around the woods, we find some small game paths and hear a few noises, but we don't find anything. So we both look at each other and decide it's not worth it so we start walking back to the tent which will take at least 30 minutes. On our way back we can hear things in the woods that sounded like tree knocks and woods. We get about a hundred yards from the property we're camping out on and suddenly a rock flies through the woods and lands within 10 feet of me and Kevin. Then it's like it just unloaded on us, rocks were landing all around us with not much time between impact. We hear all sorts of whoops and hollers coming from different directions almost like we were being surrounded. I tell Kevin to run and I'll be right behind him. So we start running towards the property and hear trees snapping behind us. I stop for a split second raise the gun a fire a shot into the air. Then all goes silent. Kevin stops just in the clearing of the property and looks back at me. I look back at him and we both run onto the property and book it out of there as fast as the pickup truck we drove will take us. I haven't been up there since. My Sasquatch experience. Thought I'd share one of my experiences. I grew up in Oregon. As most Oregonians do, we did a lot of camping. One particular trip we were at our favorite site on the east side of Hills Creek Reservoir. I don't remember the exact date, but I was probably 14 to 15 years old around 99. The exact coordinates for the site are 43 to 122. My tent was fairly close to the water, maybe 40 feet back while my parents' tent with my younger siblings were about 200 feet further back into the woods. I was maybe 15 feet from the fire and our kitchen was set up about 30 feet west of me on a raised area. 
Everyone went to bed while I stayed up around an hour longer with my dog. We eventually went to bed. I get all cozy and my dog perks up with alert. I wasn't too worried as I could hear the frogs and crickets. Then, everything went dead silent. Frogs and crickets stopped. I could hear something coming through the woods from the direction of the lake. It sounded large. I thought maybe a bear or a deer. My dog starts growling and I do my best to keep her quiet. The walking sound gets to the raised area of the camp where our kitchen is. I hear some of the stuff move around. I manage to slowly unzip part of the tent window. It's very dark, not much of a moon and the fire was dying. But I could vaguely see something. Then, a very large figure steps down from the raised area, about a four to five foot drop, and walks directly towards my tent. My heart is pounding. Dog starts shaking while growling. Thankfully not a bark is released. The figure moves past my tent within five to six feet, and makes its way up the road back through the woods with huge broad steps, each with a deep bend. Ten minutes later the frogs and crickets come back. Not the most dramatic encounter I want to share. Recently I have gone from marginally interested in the topic of Bigfoot, to really taking a deep look into this phenomenon. For whatever reason this topic really has captured me. One of the most fascinating things is when you hear a person state after an encounter, how these other weird little things that they previously brushed off, an acorn thrown at them, etc., begin to make more sense. Something similar is happening to me, in that two separate experiences I have had in my life, have started to make much more sense now. What follows is one of those experiences as the other I have shared previously. This was around 2007 and at the time I owned a small three-acre parcel next to the Manistee National Forest in Michigan's Lower Peninsula. I should mention the county in which this took place is easily one of the most rural and remote counties in the LP. The property was seldom visited, and so my buddies and I decided to camp there one weekend, to check out the fishing nearby. At the time, there were no houses or cabins built around the lot. The property was densely wooded, and so we camped in small clearing. Pretty uneventful typical camping and around 11 p.m. turned in each in our own tents. Now I have to share that I am an extremely light sleeper and it sounds that will wake me up. So it's often hard for me to fall asleep with the normal camping sounds, insects etc. But I was finally able to. At some time in the night it was well after midnight I know that I remember waking up because all of the sounds I fell asleep to were silent completely silent. I laid there for a few minutes, half out of it, when I hear footsteps coming in from the woods behind me. They were very definite but I could tell they were trying to be quiet. They only stayed for a few minutes, walked around my tent and then walked off. I thought it was one of my buddies going to take a leap, and so I waited for the zipper sound of them getting back into their tent, but it never happened. The next day, having breakfast around the fire, I mentioned the footsteps and of course no one heard them, and also no one had left their tent that night. We spoke a bit about what it could have been. For myself, I was concerned it was a bear, but they said there is no way a bear would be that quiet, and nothing was touched at the camp. Their consensus was a deer, but I remember saying that it sounded too legged, and not a small-sized foot, it didn't feel like a hoof, but a longer more sustained footfall. My one friend kindly just said I was no tracker and it was some animal, and to drop it. And that was it for that day I dropped it too just being relieved it was not a bear. Looking back it's so funny, because that one friend who was the most stirred up, made some excuse about his tent leaking and slept in his truck that night. I didn't even question it. That second night, the footsteps came back, did their little cautious life, and left back into the forest. I swear whatever it was was on two legs, and the same longer duration footfall sound. It never occurred to me that it was anything else that me just misinterpreting the sound of a typical animal. My first encounter. A few days ago I shared on this sub what was my second, that I am aware of, encounter with these creatures while growing up in Michigan. It occurred to me that while I have shared my first encounter elsewhere on Reddit, I've never shared it on this sub. Here we go and I hope you find the somewhat longer wind-up valuable and entertaining. In 1974 my parents moved my little brother and I from Greater Detroit all the way up north to the ferry at the time, rural town of Elk Rapids. 
My father bought a small roadside motel, and he and my mom made a real go of it. This place was magical for me as a five-year-old snakes, turtles, frogs, all of this natural world was new to me. In looking back, I am amazed at how much land my parents owned due to them also owning some frontage on LK Michigan as part of the motel grounds. I mention this due to the fact that the beach itself was set far back, maybe 0.25 miles behind the motel with fit dense forest in between. I can't stress enough for those of you who are familiar with what this area is like now in the mid-70s it was really away from it all. So much so, that my dad learned that there was a Native American family living on his land, in the forest, and that they needed access to the hand well pump in the barn in order to have water, which he gladly allowed to continue. In looking back, it must have been quite an adjustment for he and my mother also. So it was during one of those summer nights, all the windows open, breeze blowing in and the curtains billowing in, that I shot out of bed. Again I was five at the time, and I still cannot say what got me up in the middle of the night. It was definitely late, everyone was sound asleep and the whole place was dead silent. I remember being frightened, and I remember that I had to get to my parents' room as quickly and quietly as possible. This is where my memory is more acute. I remember that my parents' bedroom window was open. I remember the sheer curtains billowing on the breeze. I stood at the doorway to their room, looking at my parents sleeping, then going back to the window. I remember their window faced the courtyard for the motel, and there was light coming from the window either from the yard lights in the courtyard, or the moon. I remember the light so vividly. It was then that someone or something came to the open window and was looking in at me. I could not see its face, it was completely blacked out in silhouette. All I could see was the halo of long hair, hair everywhere, not just its head, all lit up by the light behind it. The sight of it broke me from my spell, and I crossed the room and dove in between my parents. I laid there, being as quiet as possible, knowing that it watched me run across the room. There was no sound. I remember my dad lying on his side like a wall between me and whatever it was at the window I remember lifting my head to peek over a few times, and each time it was still there, staring in the window. At some point, I must have fallen asleep. That experience was a turning point for me, and not in the best way, because, now that I'm 50 years old I am no longer embarrassed. From then on I really struggled to sleep on my own and was always trying to sneak in my parents' bed, well into grade school. I really dreaded going to bed, even when my brother and I shared a room. Looking back, I wish I would have said something to them about that in the moment, but what would they have done? It was years later, as an adult, when my cousins asked me to tell them that story, again, at a family function, that my mother, my father had already passed, overheard and asked me to tell her about it. I could see it in her eyes that lots of pieces fell into place. As I write this and think about that moment when I stood at my parents' door, watching the window I realize now I may have been expecting it to appear there. Maybe I saw it at my bedroom window and thought it might follow me. My possible Bigfoot experience. I've only shared this experience with a few people in the year since it happened. It was the first Tuesday of the Pennsylvania deer rifle season. December 3, 2013. I've always been an avid hunter and I would wake up very early in the morning to get into the woods before daylight. I would be in the woods at 4.30 in the morning. Having to hunt on state game lands meant beating other people into the woods to get a decent spot. When I got to the parking area around 4.15 am, no one else was there. So I walked into the woods, not using a flashlight, only walking by moonlight. I walked through a field into the tree line and started on the path to my spot. I came to the intersection in the path, one way went left and down the mountain, other way went right. I went right, because my spot was on the other side. Roughly 50 yards after making the right hand turn, I smelled what I could only describe as hot garbage. It hit me in the face. Like I mean hot dumpster juice in the middle of August. So I stopped dead. Turned on my flashlight expecting to see piles of garbage. Nothing. No garbage, nothing dead. Just hot garbage smell. Keep in mind this is in December, it's cold out. High 20s to low 30s. So even if there was garbage, it shouldn't smell that bad. 
so I kinda thought nothing. I followed the path to my spot, which was down over the ridge from the garbage snow. Roughly maybe 40 feet down, that leads into a grass field where I would sit. I set up my seat, get settled in for about two minutes. That's when the rock started coming down the ridge. First rock, startled me, causing me to turn on my light again, scanning the field hoping to see our reflection of a deer but nothing was there. I sat back down. Another rock comes down the ridge. This time I stand up go out into the grass field with flashlight and the pistol that I carry while hunting. Scanned again, nothing, purposely waited in the field for about 5 minutes. Now I'm getting angry, assuming another hunter is messing with me because I'm in their spot. I sit down again. The third rock, sounding larger than the others, comes tumbling down the ridge. I don't get up this time. Not two minutes after that, another rock, not tumbled but sounded as though it was thrown off the ridge and landed in the field. Now damn it, I'm pissed. I gathered up my gear, and started back up the trail to the ridge. I get on top of the ridge, scanning with my light the whole time, nothing, no eyes, no other hunt. I get to the spot where I smell the hot garbage. Nothing. The smell is gone. Finally it clicked in my head. It may not have even been another person. Possibly something else. I've heard other stories of people's Bigfoot experiences, a lot of which remark about how bad they smell. F this. I all but ran out of the woods. And to top it all off, no other vehicles were in the parking area when I got out of the woods. This took place in Pennsylvania State Game Lands 229, outside of Tremont in Schuylkill County. I later come to find out that a co-worker of mine had actually seen a bipedal cross in front of his car within two miles of location of my experience. So maybe they're real. I don't know. But I definitely had an experience that I won't forget. My family's crazy Bigfoot story. Hi my name is Ruben and I am from Mumbai, India. So let's start. I first heard about Bigfoot as a kid watching National Geography. I always knew about yetis residing in deep Himalayan hills and wondered about any Bigfoots possibly living in India. So what I am about to tell you was a shocker for me when I heard it. My family had a New Year's Day gathering and all my cousins had come over for lunch. We usually spoke about sports, politics but that was too boring after a while so I decided to tell my cousins about unknown creatures like Loch Ness Monster, Dogman, etc. and I started it by telling them about Bigfoot and how the legend of Bigfoot runs wild among Americans and many people around the world. I was not prepared for what was going to happen next. My dad and my grandpa overheard the conversation and came to my room and stood in utter disbelief that I knew about Bigfoots and I realized just by looking at their eyes they knew about it more than I have ever read or seen. In utter shock my dad started telling me about a story of his childhood when he was around 12 years old along with my grandpa that he had encountered something which defied belief. I still have tears in my eyes while I write this as this was a surreal moment for me to know that these creatures do exist here in India as well. He said on a cold winter's evening around 7 o'clock in 1972 my grandpa and my dad were coming back from church and the road that led to the house had acres of sugarcane farm with tall bushes on both the side of the road. They were on a 110cc scooter which could be converted to a bicycle if it ran out of fuel and this came in handy as they lived in the countryside far away from town. While they were passing by a huge banyan tree something just ran out of the sugarcane farm on the left and crossed the road. This thing was 20 to 25 feet away. My grandpa described it as a huge 8 to 9 feet hairy ape-like creature with dark black fur. The creature was on two legs, almost like a gorilla who had learned to walk like a man. The creature crossed the road in an instant and went to the other side of the road and saw my dad and grandpa, and at the very moment my dad out of fear screamed looking at this hairy creature with massive pecs and shoulders, this led to the creature running away in the field. The speed at which the creature ran was absolutely shocking and my granddad knew this low-powered bike wouldn't do any good if the creature decided to pursue them. Thankfully this creature decided to leave them alone and was never seen again. This was the encounter that changed their life and raised their curiosity in the subject. 
They never spoke of it in fear of being ridiculed, but when they saw me speak about Bigfoots, they knew they were not alone and many people in the world had experienced what they had seen. My dad even went on to say about a man he knew who filmed one of these creatures but never knew what they were called and thought it was some kind of an ape. People in India would generally not know about such cryptids. I saw the truth of the story in my grandpa's eyes and never have I felt such a strong conviction to tell a story like this. I know this may sound weird but there are accounts of Bigfoot encounters in deep rural India. I don't know what was the thing which my granddad and dad saw but I am sure it was certainly not a gorilla walking on two feet. Positive Cryptid Encounter I've just seen a question on here asking about a positive encounter. And I have one I would like to share. Though may not be what I thought. About 20 years ago after I graduated high school I used to run traps to make extra money in the winter time. Since I was pregnant with my daughter any sort of extra income was necessary. Since trapping is frowned upon oddly, anyway my father had always told me about the creek I trapped in as being quite strange. We would always walk the creek to collect arrowheads and look for other Shawnee relics. So he would tell me stories about the Shawnee Native American tribe and their history and folklore. It was a very special spot to us. So when I began trapping my father would tell me to have respect for the wildlife. Don't let her kill humanely and don't kill what doesn't need to be killed. So I built a great deal of appreciation for life, which led to my career in conservation. The only reason I state these things is to build context as to why I did what I did. About once a week, while walking up the creek I would hear whistling, like a human but in random patterns, and that would be along with the smell of sulfuric and rotten eggs. Which my dad told me was most likely a Bigfoot or skunk egg. And sightings had occurred as long as he could remember in our area. Then one time I was scanning down the tree line with my binoculars to check to see if I had any coyotes and foxes in my traps to save me the walking time. I seen a fairly medium sized tree swaying dramatically a little past the tree line, so I headed over there with my .22 hoping to sneak up on a bobcat, or any animal that was medium sized my .22 could kill with a headshot. About three quarters of the weight of the tree line the swaying stopped, and I didn't see anything. But at least two of whatever it was began whistling and whooping further back in the forest. I continued to head up the creek and it always stayed somewhat behind me at a distance but never left. That was fairly interesting. Then one day sadly an oil fracking company purchased most of the land. They still gave me permission to track. But they had a few accidents where the water got so damn nasty it killed just about everything. It broke my heart to see beavers muskrats and some coons floating down the creek every time i went but after they had installed their rigs and cleared some forest things got a little hostile one day running traps almost all of my traps had been ruined bent beaten and broken and the remaining animals i had caught were either stolen ripped from the trap with the foot or leg still attached and i even found a coyote that had been messed up then. fur torn broken lower jaw and head beaten I felt like this was in retaliation to what the oil company had done. And I was being blamed. But it is positive. For a few months afterwards I would go to the store twice a week and buy a variety of apples, pears and a mixture of meat from carcasses I had skinned put it in a basket and leave it in the forest hoping whatever it was would get it before anything else. Sometimes the basket would disappear, but always in two days everything was gone. One day I believe it left me a present in return. Next to where I dropped off the basket, there was about 100 plus small sticks stacked very neatly, about 20 acorns and a deer in. It made me feel happy. I do hope that I did help this creature out in its very sad moment of its life. Though it may have been everything but a Bigfoot slash skunk head. Because I never physically seen it, or any tracks in the creek bed. But all of my occurrences happened in the woods along of the creek, so I really don't know. So still to this day 20 years later I think of it time to time, and I don't see a reason people should be afraid of it. It was a sad but positive two winter seasons with it. Even if it was an animal I didn't recognize, I hoped I helped. Thanks for reading.
I was working late into the wee hours of the morning when I decided to take a break to catch a smoke and take my dog out. Once we got outside and downstairs to the small grassy area next to my apartment building, I let my dog off the leash and popped a squat on the stairs and watched as she did her doggy stuff. By the time my cigarette was halfway finished, she had already taken a long leap and was now starting to make big sweeping circles looking for a place to park her feet. Knowing it would probably be a couple more minutes until she found her ideal spot, I just kept on smoking while I counted her laps. It was ten at that point. As she does with her weird little poop ritual, she'll make one big final circle outside of the area she had been stomping around in before zeroing in. As I watched her start to make her final sweep, she stopped dead in her tracks about twenty feet in front of one of the trees that spot the landscape in front of my apartment complex. I was about another 30 or so feet behind her location, but I could see from where I was sitting, that her hackles had come out and her body was completely rigid. Knowing my dog like I did, she was about 20 seconds away from losing her and waking up half the neighborhood with her angry bark. I put my smoke out and started walking her way and softly calling her name. Usually this is enough to break her focus and get her to calm down, but that night, she was onto something. As I started getting closer to her, I noticed a change in my ever-present tonight. It had changed in pitch and become a lot louder. Louder than I remember it being in a long time. Another few steps, and I start to feel a weird sensation behind my left eyeball. It was not an unfamiliar feeling, but like the level of the tinnitus, I had not felt it for some time. I took another few steps where I come up on my dog and gently pet her back. As I did that, a piercing pain shot through the left side of my head. Once again, it was not an unfamiliar feeling, but it was not something I had experienced in some time. Nor did I want to. It was the telltale sign that within the next 90 seconds, I was going to start my first vertigo attack attack in nearly 11 years. I started to talk to my dog in a more stern tone to try and break whatever trance she was in. But she ignored me and continued to focus on the tree in front of us. Only now she was letting out a deep guttural growl unlike anything I had ever heard from her before or since. Like clockwork, the pain behind my left eye and left side of my head abruptly and I was hit with a wave of heavy vertigo. I hooked on my dog's leash and stood up. When I did, the vertigo gave off the sensation that my brain had detached from the base of my spine and was doing freeform back flips in my skull. I had to fight to stay upright and keep my eyes from rolling back so I had enough perceived balance to make it back upstairs. To do this, I focused on the tree that my dog had been so upset about. And that's when it decided to step out from behind the tree and into our view. What it was remains to be seen, but I can tell you that it was tall. Taller than me, and I stand at 6 feet 7 inches. It was skinny too. Like unimaginably skinny. So skinny in fact, that you wouldn't believe organs could fit inside its torso. Along with its odd stature, the thing's skin was this deep picture. Due to the color, and the weird way it played with the poor lighting, it was impossible to make out any dissonant facial or body features. From that impression alone, the only description I can muster up is that it looked like a poorly drawn 2D stickman that busted off the page. My dog was dead silent at this point, but she was shaking. We didn't dare move though, so I just stared at this thing as it looked back at us from maybe six feet in front of us. A few seconds more, and then the thing turned around and took off down the street away from us running at an astounding speed. It moved oddly though, like it was gliding rather than running. Almost what a cross-country skier might look like, but even smoother and completely silent. It covered half a block in a matter of seconds before jumping over a six-foot fence in a single leap and vanishing in the night. A second after it vanished, my vertigo stopped, the tinnitus went down, and I was fine again. Well, mostly fine. I ended up doubling over and puking before walking my dog back. I don't know if my sudden vertigo attack was related to what I saw that night, but it certainly feels that way. Vertigo attacks that are associated with Meniere's tend to last an hour at their shortest and 24 hours at their longest. 
My attacks always averaged in the 12 to 16 hour range. This attack lasted less than two minutes. Yesterday I spent the night at a friend's house. I will call them Sam and Bob for privacy reasons, everyone else's name will also be changed. It was Sam, Bob, Jeff, and us Sam and Bob are brothers. Anyways, Jeff and I came over and brought our dirt bikes. So naturally we spent the day riding, we had also ran to a store and picked up some fireworks to let off that night. We had quit riding at around 7. Keep in mind this is eastern Kentucky, in the middle of the woods and farmland, because Sam and Bob's family are loaded with money. Since we had finished riding, and it was getting pretty dark, we decided to light some fireworks. We had been lighting some smaller firecrackers and fountains and whatnot. But, Jeff had the idea to have a Roman candle lit. In the middle of the wood, when we were grabbing new candles, we heard a woo which ended up being a used Roman candle fire and a shot in the grass, but we didn't know that immediately, and Sam made the comment that it was probably a Wendigo. Unto which Bob and Sam get in a huge argument about it when Vigos live in Kentucky or not. This blew up and ended with resolving it with a pillow fight on a trampoline. After we were all gassed out, I decided we should spend all night on the trampoline. At around 9 or 10-ish, Jeff and I spotted some coyotes at a tree line across the road from us. We all went inside because I freaked out because I'm from the city and don't like wild animals. Also, it stunk really bad. It smelled like dead rabbit or deer. Probably the coyotes got something, so we all go inside but leave the pillows and blankets on the trampoline. After about an hour inside Sam tells us we forgot the bedding on the trampoline, and he wanted me and Jeff to go there. I being terrified of the dark, beg Jeff to come with me. He agrees and we throw our socks and shoes on, and head out the back door onto the patio slash port. We go down the stairs and towards the trampoline. I am behind Jeff grabbing the back of his shirt and he has a flashlight pointing straight. I'm looking to the right towards past the road looking for the coyotes. But I hear a thud sound to our left. I look over there and there is a line of four trees parallel. They are shaped in a V starting at the base. I don't see anything but I tell Jeff to point the flashlight over there and we don't see anything. So he swings it straight and keeps walking. I hear the thud this time but this time Jeff also hears it. It is much 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 louder. It's still to our left. Jeff swings the flashlight in between the second and third tree in the row and is walking straight with us. Not at us, but towards the same direction we were going. As soon as the flashlight lands on it, it's behind the third tree now and it stands up in the middle of the V of the tree. It stood about four or five heads taller than me and then five feet nine inches. It was incredibly skinny as in I could see its grip through its skin, which was a bright white, like not fluorescent white, but when the flashlight hit it, it definitely had a glow. Its eyes were the scariest part two big reflective orbs that were dark gray slash blackish but here's the catch they were reflective in a sense, like the eyes illuminated the flashlight back at us. Also his hands were gigantic its fingers wrapped around the tree trunks and they were super long. Jeff looks over and I scream and he just stands still I turn around and he is still standing but he dropped the flashlight. I still have his shirt in my hand and I yank him hard and he just takes off in front of me. I sprint past him, up the back porch stairs, he falls on the stairs and I run to the door and open it and wait for him as soon as he runs through I slam it shut and lock the deadbolt and shut the curtains and jump back onto their couch. An interesting history about the Wendigo which is what today we call the rape of frog. A dangerous flesh-eating evil spirit possessing and distorting a human body. This is from an Algonquin tribe, the same group of tribes where the Jesuits learned about the Wendigo. Today these demons are coming back out of the old tales into modern culture, as their numbers increase. Jack Fiddler was an Ogoma, chief and shaman, of the Sucker Dudem among the Anishinaabe in what is now northwestern Ontario. 
His arrest in 1906 for the alleged murder of a Wendigo and his suicide before trial marked the beginning of the imposition of Canadian law on the people. Until then, Fiddler's people had been among the last Aboriginal peoples living in North America completely under their own law and custom like his father before him. Jack Fiddler became a famous shaman for his alleged ability to conjure animals and protect his people from spells. Most importantly to the people of the region, he could allegedly successfully defeat the Wendigo, a cannibalistic spirit that would possess people during all too frequent bouts of famine and disease. In his life, Jack Fiddler claimed to have defeated 14 Wendigos. Apparently some were sent against his people by enemy shamans, and others were members of his own band who were taken with an insatiable, incurable desire to eat human flesh. In the latter case, Fiddler was usually asked by family members to kill a very sick loved one before they turned Wendigo. In some cases, the Wendigo him or herself would ask to be euthanized according to the necessary rites. Fiddler's own brother, Peter Flett, was killed after turning Wendigo when the food ran out on a trading expedition. HBC traders and Cree and missionaries were well aware of the Wendigo legend, though they often explained it as mental illness or superstition. Regardless, several incidents of people turning Wendigo and eating human flesh are documented in the records of the company. Jack Fiddler's reputation also grew among these groups, and he was approached multiple times by three ministers of Island Lake and asked to bring Christianity to his people. Though he respectfully heard their request, Fiddler did not come. By the beginning of the 20th century, the Sucker people were among the only indigenous people in North America living in a traditional manner with almost no government imposition on legal and religious matters. Someone said it could be a problem. This is a little long, so I apologize. So I was probably around 9 to 10, and my family was moving back to our hometown area from El Paso where my dad was stationed on the base there. Our realtor, M, was showing us houses. So we pull up to this house, and it's overgrown with bushes and ugly crabgrass. The sidewalk is uneven and jagged, and even missing in some places. The white siding is pretty much brown by this point with tree branches overhanging almost every inch of the roof so all you can see is this cave-like entrance into the front door. M informs us oh yeah it's been on the market for years, and there is no electricity so we will be seeing it in the dark we go inside and the sight that hits us is remarkably depressing. There is broken picture frames and glass all over the floor, red splotches of some sort of powder are covering everything. A very very large chest is in the center of the living room about 5 feet in from the front door and there is the room's one single intact photo frame, with a half-ripped picture of a family inside of it, a boy and his mom, sitting on top of it in almost perfect condition except one crack in the glass. The house smells like something. Something old and wet, yet fresh and rotting at the same time. No one noticed the smell. We leave the living room and all I remember next is going to look into the garage. Now y'all remember when M told us there was no electricity and we would be seeing the house in the dark. The singular light bulb in the garage was glowing blue, not a bright iridescent blue by any means but a sickly, dim blue that was just bright enough to illuminate the walls and floor and bathe the garage in the same shade of blue that was radiating. My parents and both made a comment how that was weird. And maybe there was some sort of charge going to the light through the power lines and whatever whatever whatever, I couldn't care less because what I was staring at was worse than any creepy light that was working when it shouldn't have been. There was something inside the garage, it looked like a human, or maybe what used to be a human, but it appeared, wet. Its skin kind of looked like if you grabbed it it would just slip right off. I could see things through the skin which was so pale it seemed almost see-through. This thing was emaciated, I could see all its ribs, I could see hip bones, its arms and legs consisted of just enough fat and thighs and upper arms that you could tell that what they were and not just stick slapped on a lump of flesh. The neck was just long enough to appear proportionately weird, and the head was turned to look straight. 
If you could even say it was looking because where normal eyes would be there was just hope. There were stringy clumps of hair hanging from the tops and sides of its head. And I got the sick sense that it was happy to see me, almost as if it was thinking finally I could tell if it stood up, it would be tall, almost ceiling height. So about eight feet. I watched this thing crawl on all fours, think hands and very long feet, not hands and knees, from the center of the garage directly under the light bulb, cross in front of me and my family and Ammon disappeared into the wall. It kept its head turned on me the whole time. And I followed it with my eyes the whole time. I don't remember even feeling scared in the traditional sense. Like oh man I just saw a scary naked humanoid thing crawl across the floor in front of my eyes I felt invited, I felt intrigued, and more than anything I felt like it had been waiting on me. Just me. I felt like it was telling me come in, make yourself at home, you're welcome here my parents decided they were thoroughly creeped out though and without seeing the rest of the house. We left. They told them they weren't interested and that was that. We fired her shortly after because she made a habit of showing us abandoned houses in the pitch dark. I was the only person who saw the thing but my parents after thinking I was asleep in the car on the way home started talking about how once they opened the garage door they felt like they were trespassing, like someone was watching them. It felt colder all of a sudden than the rest of the house. It smelled like rotted meat. And something just wasn't right about that blue one. My personal experience with crawlers, or something like those? Hey everyone. As you read from the title, I want to tell y'all my personal experience with crawlers. Before we start, I want to specify that I live in Italy. So if what I saw is true, well I think that you should change the description from all throughout America to all throughout the world. Now, let's start. So, I'm a small YouTuber, and when I record my videos, I usually lock me in the recording studio, and I start to record. Well, every time I do that, I feel like I'm being watched from behind, like someone is in the attic. But it isn't only that. It has all started in April of 2020, when one night I had a very bad dream, well, when I woke up, instead of trying to sleep again. I started to make loud screams of terror, I couldn't stop, and I even injured myself trying to run away, while screaming, in a very strange state, like I couldn't control myself. That night, it was like 4 or 5 a.m., I didn't sleep, and for the entire day, I felt watched everywhere, from the kitchen, to the bathroom, to the bedroom. The following night, I saw something, an old black creature peeking out from a corner of my bedroom. But this time, I just tried to sleep again, and I did. Nowadays, yeah, like April of 2020 was 20 years ago, I sometimes do bad dreams, even about these kinds of creatures, but I always sleep again. I seldom sleep, but I feel watched sometimes, like something is in the app. So, now I want to let you decide, what happened that night? Did the creature I dreamt, probably, a crawler, like, one out of my dream? Also, if this post gets a lot of attention, I'll make a video on YouTube where I'll explore my attic to see if there's something. I just recently started talking about my only experience ever with something strange and unexplained. I really don't like to talk about it because it makes me sound crazy. I have only ever told my dad, GF at the time, a co-worker, and my best friend. Back in high school, probably 17-ish, I'm now 27, I would make regular late-night trips back from my girlfriend's house. Traveled the road to and from her house about 100 times easy. One night I headed home and on this curve my headlight shined into the ditch. I only saw it for a second but immediately I began crying like I didn't have control over my emotions. What I saw in that split second was a long-bodied white-skinned creature bigger than any person, crawling in the ditch. It reminded me of a hairless head. The head though was the shape of a person's head but no facial features except the large black mouth. Also its legs were backwards, like a person doing the crab walk. Anyways I was terrified to go back but I did at the daytime. The only thing in that ditch was a fallen tree. After I got over the fear of it, 
I drove that road probably 100 more times and never saw anything like that again. I thought it may have been the fallen tree playing tricks with the light but I don't think so because I tried to make myself see it again out of that tree. I couldn't. I just heard a creepy story from a co-worker today. I believe him because, as he was telling his story, the hairs on his arms began to stand. He described a sighting late one night in northern Wisconsin, in the winter, about 10 years ago. He was sneaking a cigarette at the back door of the place he was staying. Everyone was asleep. They were relatives of his that didn't smoke and pervaded in the cabin. As he was looking at the pines in the back of the property, through the cracked open door, he saw something moving through the tree. The moon was out and there was lots of light. Plus the reflection off of the snow brightened everything up. Anyway, he described the thing. Why didn't help? Very tall, 12 to 15 feet. Thin body, arms and legs. The head was roundish with dark slash black spots where the eyes should be. He said it didn't seem to have joined, but rather snaked its way easily in and out of the trees walking kind of sideways. I don't remember what he did with his cigarette. But he said he quietly shut and locked the door, praying it didn't see me. Now I've spent a lot of time in the woods. Summer camps, scout camp, hunting, hiking, etc. But I have never seen or heard anything like this. It really has me fascinated to think there are things like this in my area. Husband saw a crawler years ago, still stalking? So a few years ago. My husband was driving home and it was around probably 10 and he saw something on the side of the road crouched down over a deer, presumably eating it. He stopped the car to shine his headlights at it and see what it was and it bolted towards the car, hit it, and my husband took off. He said it was gray, skinny, and had long claw-like fingers. He said it looked exactly like some of the videos I've shown him from this group. Recently, he heard a weird screeching noise followed by a bubbling slash dribbling outside that kept repeating at night and immediately went to investigate until he decided it was really freaky and came inside. Weird things keep happening, things go missing here, stray cats have gone missing, we live on a cul-de-sac beside a huge empty field with woods, we've had endless bad luck lately like beyond what could be deemed coincidental. I'm wondering if this could all be related. If so, we'd like to know what we can do. I think I encountered a rape or skinwalker. This was in July, I can't remember what day, but it was in July 2019. I used to live in California. I was outside skating and heard noises coming from the back of my ship. I checked to see what it is the first thing that came to mind was the neighbor cats but it wasn't that it was a tall skinny pale looking thing it looked human but it was pale it had no private parts completely naked and nothing just flat and pale with no hair it looked at me and I just kept looking. It was either eating something or looking down at something. None of my pets were outside they're all indoor animals and my backyard is pretty big. It looked at me with great eyes and has its arms like a T-Rex kinda I was super freaked out and didn't yell at all just quickly sprinted back to my house and left the door. I told my older brother what I saw and said I was just tired. I wasn't at all it was 11pm and I'm never tired. I also have good health and don't think I was just hallucinating. I also don't think it was just a tree since there was pretty good light to see what the creature was. I also have nothing for it to be standing on to make it appear tall so it has to be either a rake or a skin. I saw one. Two years ago. I can't explain it, but I got this feeling like I wanted to visit the cemetery. I felt it had to be that day, that place. My BF came over. I told him and he tried talking me out of it saying he had a bad feeling but ultimately decided he would drive me if I was really set on going, which I was. By the time we got there the sky had grown dark, started to rain, and the wind had a biting chill. I was set on my mission, though, and got out of the car which my BF refused to me. I felt I was nervous and calm at the same time. There was a charge in the air from the rising storm. 
The gravestones lit up from the headlights and the full moon between the clouds. Walking toward where my family was buried I had a sudden urge to go to the farthest part of the cemetery, where the older graves rested. I turned the light on my phone and made my way behind the graves, closely to the tree line to avoid disturbing the peace. I tend to look at my feet when I walk and I was doing just that when I got the feeling I was being watched. An uneasy feeling lingered at the base of my neck. I had walked for a while and could no longer see the lights of the car. I began to point my phone around, behind me, toward the trees to my left, and the grave sites to my right. I froze at the sight of it. Seemingly hovering above a stone marker, the creature whipped its pale head around, which sort of blowed a faint eerie. Its face was devoid of any features, except for slight indents where its eyes should be. As my light touched it, it revealed a mouth full of thin teeth and let out an ear-piercing shriek, sinking to its hands and feet in a crouch and disappearing into the thick of the woods before I could blink. I was still for a solid five seconds, trying to comprehend what I had seen. It finally processed and I turned to run as fast as I possibly could back to the car. I was out of breath and seeing spots when I reached it, dove in and shut and locked the door. My Bia, bewildered, asked what was wrong but I shouted over him to drive away right now. I watched out the back glass to see if we were being followed. Sketching the creature as soon as I got home, I recounted what happened over and over, trying to disprove to myself what I thought had happened. I could find no logical rationality to explain it away. I saw what I saw. I put it from my mind, not wanting to dwell on unseen things seen, and haven't visited the cemetery since. Last night I was watching Netflix, an episode in Volume 2 of Love, Death and Robots, The Tall Grass. I was wrapped the whole time, clenching a pillow to my chest, mouth hanging open, palms sweating. I had seen those creatures before, or one of them, and decided to turn to Google to see what I could find out about. My search led me here and seeing so many testimonies made me want to share as well. Thanks for reading. TLDR don't go to a cemetery during a thunderstorm over a full moon on the eve of the winter solstice. The Woods. This is my story. I'll post the full version here because I failed to mention what happened in that story. I recently posted this in another subreddit and was told to share it here. So here it goes. This is a very long story and I'm not the best at writing things out but I'll try. I live in Georgia, the state, and a rural town not too far from a major city. There's a set of woods that's behind our house and it divides two neighborhoods and it's about a mile wide of that. Strange occurrences have always surrounded these woods. Small things like random trash. Park set. I should mention it's more swampy marsh than wood so it makes camping in there impossible. One night I was taking our dog out. He stays in the back half of the house due to him not like my other dog. I took him out the side door and walked around the house to the fence. For some reason when we left the house he was absolutely terrified. He didn't want to go out. Very unusual for a dog who's quick to snatch someone's soul of confidence. Not thinking about it we pushed on. After he tinkled, we walked back. This is when I noticed it. Or rather heard it. Crunching of leaves. At first I thought it was one of our dozen cats on the property until I realized it was matching my steps. If I walked you could hear it walking. If I stopped, it stopped. There's a small clearing between woods where one of sheds is. That's when we saw it. My dog was first to see something, and then I saw some. I don't know. Creature? It was taller than the shed so maybe a good eight feet tall, and it darted across the clearing at a crazy fast speed. My dog who again isn't scared of anything bolt so fast I dropped his leash and he ran to the door whining. I was quickly behind him. Once we were inside I quickly bolted the door and ran to tell my girlfriend what happened. She immediately wanted to investigate, saying it's probably a woodland creature. Armed with two flashlights we went out the front door. As we walked towards the wood line we could hear something moving around. It sounded maybe 200 yards away. As we scanned with our flashlights we saw nothing but kept hearing. 
Then we heard it get closer and closer until it was maybe 20 feet away. Still nothing. No eyes, not even an animal call. Just rustling. My girlfriend now stared head for the house. I decided to check with the neighbors to see if maybe one of their many dogs got it. When I arrived at his house my neighbor, who will call Dave, explained that all his dogs were accounted for. Curious he came to investigate. This is when I noticed that whatever this thing was followed me along the line to Dave's house and was now behind Dave's house. Gun in hand we went into his backyard scanning for something. We could hear it rustling or maybe running. About 100 yards away in thick swampy woods. Way too thick for a person to walk and let alone run in. Then it stopped. It was dead silent. Scanning and on it we hear and see nothing and then bam all of a sudden it was five feet in front of sprinting. It slammed the fence so hard it rocked it back and forth. Dave, shot randomly as well. Nothing. We never saw it. Never had to get close to it. Again as I mentioned the woods are thick. To thick to run and so what teleported silently in front of us and slammed the gate. Spook we were about to run. Then we heard it. It was human in nature, but not in it. It sounded alien-like, not a known language. Dave, a hunter for the last 40 years still to this day, can't explain what that was. Anyway, after we heard that we bolted, he covered me and I ran to my house. Not 10 minutes later, we both hear a loud explosion coming from the woods. It shook our houses and flickered our power. I ran outside to see what it was and of course nothing but when Dave came out and confirmed he felt the same thing we were both once again terrified. Moments later a few strangers from the neighborhood came driving down to our cul-de-sac and they all agreed the blast sound they heard came from behind our house. 911 was called and the two police officers interviewed us separately. Our stories matched. The responding officers refused to go anywhere near those rooms that took the report and left. To this day, we're still not sure what that encounter was. Also, Dave doesn't go outside at night anymore. It spooked him that bad. The next night, earlier in the day, my mother-in-law, a police officer for a town 40 minutes away, installed two motion-activated trail cams along the woods edge. They were brand new. Keep that detail in mind. Thinking maybe we'd see something we waited for nightfall. Later that evening I went outside to feed our outdoor cats. That's when I heard it again. Russell. This time not taking any chances I ran inside and told everyone what I heard. They all piled by the back door and urged me to go out there and look. Reluctantly I agreed. I took my flashlight and walked to the edge of the woods. Knowing there was a trail cam covering this area, I figured if it got me it would be on camera and my sacrifice wouldn't be for nothing. As I got to the woods edge, I could hear it still rustling. I'm shaking at this point because I could tell it was maybe less than 15 yards in front of me. Everyone at the door was watching me and could hear this thing. Then it got quiet. For a moment it was gone, or so I thought. Just as I'm scanning with my flashlight trying desperately, see a normal woodland creature so I can laugh this whole thing away boom something fell out of a tree and hit the ground so hard it shook the soil beneath my feet. It was so close to that I was sure it was gonna lunge out the brush and snag me. I dropped my flashlight and ran 100 yards back to the house in what felt like two seconds. I screamed get in the house as everyone was already scampering into the house. They heard and felt the thud too. Our neighbor Dave, called my mother-in-law to ask what that loud crash was. For him to have heard it from well over 700 yards away is insane to me. Once the adrenaline died down we realized that this happened right next to the trail camp. Problem solved we got evidence of this thing. The next morning we checked the SD cards on the trail camp. They have videos up until 11.47 p.m. The rest is corrupted. They were both brand new trail cams and SD cards. We reset everything and set them back up and to this day we've still never encountered the creature again nor caught anything on the camera. I'm sorry if this was poorly written, I did my best. My skinwalker encounter growing up. 
I was just talking to my boyfriend about some weird stuff I saw as a kid. He's a hardcore believer in skinwalkers and won't say it or even let me say it after it gets dark in fear of attracting one. My story starts with coming back from the store with my family. In my village, an entire new neighborhood was being built. Mind you, I live in an area that used to have a lot of forest around me, which has since been destroyed due to people building houses. There was a dirt slash gravel road in the middle of the woods from the main road that led to a shortcut to my house. I was maybe 9 or 10 at the time, and I distinctly remember sitting in the middle seat in the middle row of our family minivan, so I got a clear view in between the driver's seat and passenger seat. I was talking with my younger siblings goofing on, and I looked up to see it crouched on the road. It looked almost exactly like the picture you get when you google the brake. It had pale gray skin, it was freakishly slender, and it had eyes like reflectors. I freaked out and screamed out saying something along the lines of what is that? And both of my parents turned around and asked what I was talking about. I burst into tears and see it run over behind a tree. It's so tough. I see it peek from the tree a couple of times to explain what it looked like to my mom when I stared. My mom didn't believe me at all and got mad at me for trying to scare my sibling. Around that time I used to watch a lot of those ghosts caught on tape. Type stuff on YouTube and I'd show my younger siblings which resulted in many nightmares for them. My dad on the other hand said it was probably just a deer. It looked nothing like a deer. I still remember those eyes. When we passed by the tree I saw it run behind, nothing was there. It was completely dark, I thought I must have imagined it, until my dad told me he saw something too when we got home. He told me he saw something out of the corner of his eye but didn't get a good look since I started screaming and he turned around to look at me. To this day, it still scares me, and I never walk too close to the woods at night. Strange Sounds Hello I'm from the Northeast Ohio area and for the past year I've been working and living in Pennsylvania doing a local show. Typically I'm in a new city in a new hotel. I've been all over the state, typically driving 100 to 300 miles a day through winding mountain roads. Pennsylvania can be a strange place at night, especially with a lack of street lighting on many roads. On one occasion while driving down a back road through central PA, a giant dog hopped the guard rail and ran in front of my truck. On all fours, its head was at the hood of my truck. A 2020 Dodge 2500, the hood of the truck is 6 feet from the ground. It made prolonged eye contact with me with sharp piercing yellow eyes as it crossed the road and continued into the woods. Flash forward to now, I'm in the Philadelphia area. The area my hotel occupies is newly developed. So the parking lot of the hotel is well lit but the surrounding area is wooded and dark. I'm often awake until early morning hours and keep my blinds open. The other night, I was looking out the window and saw an odd white shape in the parking lot. It was absolutely featureless from what I could tell, kind of like a blob with thick short legs. I was so shocked I did a double take and it was gone. Tonight about 30 minutes ago, I was laying in bed watching TV window open blinds up. I heard this odd noise. The only way I can describe it is it sounded like a baby's cup, but muffled and raspy, and it sounded like it was being carried away as if a strong gust of wind was blowing it out of earshot. I heard it three times and saw nothing out of my window. But I have never heard a sound like that. Could this possibly be a crawler? This happened to me while I was in college, 20 plus years ago, and I never forgot it. It was one of the first times I ever remember seeing true fear and panic on someone's face. This part will only spatially make sense if you are familiar with Monterey, CA. I lived in the seaside area, and my college girlfriend lived in Carmel Valley. Sometimes when I would drive her home late at night we would take a lightly used roadway called Lowerlays Road, which was long dark, and full of winding turns. It also let us out near her house so it was a minor time saver. 
We were driving home late one night and we were chatting and laughing about something or another. As we usually did on the ride, when she looks out the window, stops mid-sentence, screams, then looks forward and yells no more. She's terrified. I floor it and ask her what is happening and she won't talk. She is literally next to me hyperventilating. I drove unsafely fast through the twists and turns of the road and a few minutes later slowed down, assuming that whatever scared her was fast in her rear view. By this point she has calmed a bit as well and I ask her again, what happened? Her first reply was you didn't see it? She then proceeds to tell me that as we were driving around the corner, she was looking out the window and my headlights lit up a human looking animal, standing along the side of the road disjointedly on all fours with a human-looking face that looked like it was hissing. My first reaction was that it might actually be a hurt person and maybe we should go back or call 911, but she was adamant that no, it was not a person, and there was no way we were going back. We got to her house a few minutes later and out of extra precaution called the local police and asked them to go and check the area. We never had any follow-up from them. Fast forward several years, 15 or so, and I was telling a co-worker who was from that area about the incident. She got really spooked and when I finished she told me that Lower Lace Grade was known for strange sightings and is a spot that UFO fanatics tend to go to. I'm not a UFO guy, which I thought was interesting. The rape stole my freedom. So let's all be honest here. Everyone knows that the rape is nothing more than a creepy past. However, you cannot deny that people around the world are seeing and having legitimate experiences with this creature or rather one that resembles the being in the stories, myself included. I've grown up with a relatively open mind in regards to strange phenomena and things that aren't generally accepted by mainstream science or society but always approach things with appropriate skepticism. I have spent a very large majority of my life in the woods hunting, fishing and mountain climbing miles deep in the back country and so within all of that time I've observed many different animals, plants and sometimes things I just simply cannot explain. I've gone camping and trekking solo many times in my life, it was liberating to just pack whatever you needed to survive and go miles deep into the back country where animals aren't even afraid of you simply because they aren't familiar with humans. It felt so special to be the only one immersed in that environment, but not anymore. Now, hidden behind all of the natural beauty is underlying anxiety, fear and legitimate danger. An environment that once felt so comforting and therapeutic turned into one that drove me absolutely mad with questions and uncertainties and is now one I will not enter alone for I know what is possible and what is truly roaming around the forests of North America. It was 2016 in the Pocono Mountains of Pennsylvania that I saw a creature that forever changed my life and the way I perceived the world we live in. The first time I had ever heard of the creature dubbed the rape was during a conversation with a friend who had lived in the area for years and had encountered this creature on multiple occasions in very close proximity to his house. I remember him asking me if I had ever saw anything strange in the large plot of woods across the street from his house which at the time I had not however, long before it was brought up I always had a deep feeling in my chest about this plot of words. I didn't know what it was, I just knew that it carried a very heavy, dark energy that was strong enough to encourage you to stay out. My friend took out their phone and showed me the picture of the rig that comes up with any Google search, a very generic picture. I laughed it off as he warned me about the creature because I genuinely thought he was just growing marijuana or something in the woods and didn't want me to find it. I couldn't have been any more wrong. Months had passed with little more than strange noises at night and the sound of some cats being carried off into the dark until the day that changed my life happened. It was midnight, a rainstorm had just dumped a bunch of rain in me and a co-worker at the time had just clocked out and were heading to the friend's house who had warned me originally about the creature. His house is on a long straight road with a dead end, very few houses on one side, woods on the other. As we are heading down the road with high beams on my co-worker slams on the brakes and starts freaking out saying that he had just saw the creature kneeling down on the shoulder of the road. 
Instantly, without thought I jumped out of the car and immediately heard running and crashing through the woods in a parallel line to the road. Thankfully, due to the hard braking, the car shifted slightly so that the high beams were pointed into the woods and that's when I saw it. That's when my life changed, my beliefs shattered and my reality turned upside down. A six-foot-tall naked creature with grayish-white skin and long arms ran through the section of the woods fully illuminated by the headlights giving me ATL's 15 seconds of uninterrupted visual contact with the creature firmly printing it into my head. It ran just like a human being, however it was incredibly fast and jumping over any obstacle in the way until it reached the point where the headlights no longer illuminated. It then pretended to jump and run deeper into the woods however it actually turned and headed back to the road where I lost sight of it in the dark part of the woods for about 30 seconds. As I was standing in the middle of the road, absolutely dumbfounded with my jaw to the floor trying to comprehend the severity of the situation, it then crawled out from the woods and crossed the road on all fours about 60 yards away from me and disappeared into the woods on the other side. I've been tormented by the creature since. It makes me confused, sad, furious, I can't get the image out of my head, I can't forget the feelings this creature gave me while I lived there, playing and toying with my head and waking life in my dreams. I don't go into the back country alone anymore, I can't enjoy the solitude without anxiety ruining, I can't be free. This creature exists and so do others that we just can't understand and it's important that people realize this so they can enjoy nature while also being safe. I'm not sure how this post will be taken and I'm not really sure why I felt like no is the time to come out about my story, but it's eating me alive. It's given me crippling anxiety and I have to do something to try to get this off my chest. Believe me or don't, that doesn't matter to me. I just wanted people to be safe and I want my freedom back and if coming out about this will help them or do anything. The world truly isn't all that it seems. Did my boyfriend see it crawl? So this happened about two years ago, in, kind of, upstate NY. I say kind of because I'm closer to NYC, but outside of Westchester. It has woodsy areas and inner city areas. Before we lived together, we both lived with our parents. It was about a 15 to 20 minutes walk if you took the regular sidewalk, but there's abandoned railroads that basically create a shortcut. These tracks to me are scary because a lot of homeless people live there. Not that I'm afraid of homeless people, but I don't want to bump into one on abandoned tracks anymore. There's also been violent crimes that happened on them. And a semi-famous serial killer has even killed on these tracks in the early 90s. Basically as a kid, I was told to stay away from it for obvious reasons so fear of this railroad was inflicted in me at a young age. Anyway, he was walking home from my mom's one night and calls me breathing heavily and freaking out, telling me he saw a skinwalker. I had literally no idea what these were until he told me. And I honestly thought he was making things up. His description, hunched over, naked and pale. Big, piercing reflective yellow eyes and very, very skinny. His height was about five apostrophe, head regular size, mouth regular. His arms and legs were longer than his body. He was naked with absolutely no clothing. No hair literally almost identical to Voldemort from Harry Potter or the Lord of the Rings Gollum. It had deep clicking sound, that almost sounded like a growl, and when the thing noticed that he noticed it, it let out a huge shriek at which that point he ran the rest of the way home. I didn't believe him but he's a tough guy and I could hear the fear in his voice so I was concerned and did some research. Maybe two days later, in the day, we were walking in a different but close area of the tracks and found a pretty much newborn baby deer dead with a piece of its backside pretty much ripped out like something grabbed it and ripped a chunk of its body out. It was sad and terrifying because there's nothing in my area that would have done that and birds would have picked its entire body, not just a small part. A day or so later the entire body of the baby deer was gone. That's the moment I believed in, and when I started joining communities on crawlers and cryptid creatures. Encounter in Wisconsin 
Hello all. I want to share an experience I had while training with my NG unit of FT. Four, one. I have not ever been big into paranormal activity as a subject of interest. I originally got into these topics by gawking at some of the more outlandish things in our slash high strangers. But, the deeper I dug the more I found what seems to be genuine people sharing real experiences. This sub in particular strikes me as largely honest and earnest. In that spirit I wanted to share a story about one of the few unexplainable instances that have happened in my life. Certainly the most significant. Sorry for typos, I'm doing this on mobile. I am a member of the NGA Wisconsin. I moved from enlisted to officer via ROTC and was attached to a unit in my prospective MOS while in the program. I don't really want to give specifics on my service as the community is small enough to identify me that appears in the unlikely circumstance there on this subject. In 2014 my platoon decided to conduct nighttime land navigation at FT.MC Coy from 2030 to 30. While the army is typically all about buddy pairs, night land nav is one of the few cases we can do things solo if we so choose. Having done night land nav plenty before I step off alone, compass, map, and headlamp in hand. For those who do not know, land navigation involves seeking out markers on a course by plotting their coordinates on a map and moving their via brain reference and compass. At night this is typically done without light as much as possible. When light is used it is red. This minimizes damage to night vision. Ostensibly, these methods also keep you concealed in a tactical environment when employed with noise discipline. I bring this up so you can understand a few things about my circumstance. I was moving through the woods while making a token effort to be hard to spot slash here. The woodland I was in was part of a larger forest system, but was frequently traveled. That night we had some 15-ish soldiers clomping around. My illumination was a toggleable headlamp, but was toggled to be red when turned on. To cycle to white light I have to turn it off twice. My assigned points will take me to the other side of the course and back. A good hour and a half of walking as the crow flies. They're more or less in a straight line so I estimate two and a half hours out and back. I know if I come back too early I might be given another set of points. So I resolve to walk out, take a break for an hour then mosey on back. The first half of this goes as planned, I get my points without much trouble and wind up sitting on the hillside at around 10 at night. It's cloudy, but the moon is full. I can see well as when the sky is clear, poorly when it's not. Occasionally, I see a red light bobbing in the distance below me. Once a pair of platoon members pass down the hill from me, using white light to try to read their map. I startle them when I ask if they needed help. At the end of my break there's no more motion in my area. Most people have likely already walked out and back, or they were too lost and took the handrail and rode home. I'm feeling pretty at one with my surroundings, having sat in the same spot eating stale skills for a good long while. Owls who, trees swell. All is well. I trot down my hill and step through some brush. I'm in a clearing where prairie intersects woods. There are some dead trees in the area. One of them is split halfway. At the top, till the 15 feet, I can make out a head and shoulders silhouette against the clouds backlit by the moon. I walk up to ask how they got up there, and if they're stuck, when the shadow twitches and I get the impression it's turned toward me. I stand there looking at it and it's maybe looking at me. The situation feels off, but I'm not going to let a battle buddy conquer. I ask if they need a hand. Mid-sentence, the moonlight comes back. It's clear the thing on the tall stump is not a soul. This moonlight glimpse is the best look I get at the thing. It looks like a stretched out bald person. Its long arms are clutching the stump. I can't make out the face, but it looks pinched. By that I mean I couldn't see its eyes or mouth, like they were small and in the middle of the head. It's skinny like it hasn't eaten, but it's tall and obviously strong to have made such a vertical clump. It was definitely facing me, it probably was the whole time I was in the clear. Maybe since I came down the hill. Maybe my speech started. I swear loud. 
It rapidly scurries down the trunk. I flick on my red light and catch it on all fours moving toward the brush line in the direction of the head. Automatically, I keep toggling the lamp to the white light. That means it goes on, and the flashing light. In the flash I see the thing at the wood line, but I think it's flipped around and is backing in, probably to keep eyes in me. In the few seconds it takes for me to get to white light it's gone. I scan the tree line which is silent. When it moved there was a scraping noise, plus the woodland brush and dense. If it was still running I would hear it. I reasoned that it must have stopped. It must still be watching. I fumble out my knife and keep looking around the woods in front of me. After ages I start inching along a perpendicular path to my initial route of travel, an angle that will link me up with the hardball road that runs up and down the side of the course. Once in the road I can take it back to where my platoon is parked. My major problem is that the road is 10 minutes of walking away from my current position, mostly with me. That can't be helped, I have to get out of the clearing first. My progress on that front is painfully slow. I'm fighting my natural urge to freeze in place like a deer in the headlights. After sidestepping a good 10 meters I hear a corresponding rustling and think I see movement. It's enough to get me to turn and bolt, right into a downed log which trips me. I scramble up to my feet and look back to the wood line where there is an audible commotion. I glimpse a leg and ass moving back into the woods. At this point I'm done with the whole situation, but don't want to run again. I start power walking to the road, turning to look as much as I can while seeing what the thing is doing. Over the movement of my own kit I can hear it moving alongside me, parallel. As I near the end of the clearing I think I hear it picking up pace as if to cut me off. I make the decision to sprint. When I enter the woods my path is clear, but I think I can hear it in my periphery. I don't stop and run hard until I hit the pavement. I bite it hard a few times along the way, but recover with a frantic speed I cannot consciously replicate. Once in the road I run perpendicular to the forest until I don't think I hear it anymore. I'm winded from my breakout run. From the middle of the road have good visibility and decide to walk to catch my breath. It's quiet for a while. Then I hear a branch move around 30 feet in the air from the woods I had just fled. I snap my gaze up, see a pale ovular face, half in shadow peeking at me from around the trunk. I take off again. After way too long I make it back to the headlights of our LMT boots. It's 1215. What happened cadet? Did you get lost are there? You're covered in mud did you fall down? Why are you out of breath? I got lost in my way back. Yeah, I rolled down tight feet. I ran to get back in time. Lol cadet was lost. I knew better than to claim I saw a monster. Already my reaction had left me feeling free. In the years since drilling at FMC I have never experienced anything like that again. McCoy does not have a history of disappearances, as far as I know neither do the two closest towns, Sparta and Coma. I've done night land nav alone a few times since without issue. This is less from courage, and more from me deciding I must have misinterpreted the situation. After diving into paranormal subjects, I'm coming around to the idea I should trust my own account. Maybe the world is weirder than I thought. If anyone has had similar experiences elsewhere, or, hopefully, an explanation please let me know. Thanks for making it this far. Possible sighting? So I was herbexing at an abandoned phosphate mine last night located in central Florida and myself and a friend heard a noise I can't quite explain. For reference this location is surrounded by nothing but farms and distant mines for like 10 to 15 miles and has been abandoned since roughly 2008. I heard the noise in question while walking down one of the roads after the sun had set. It was just me and my three friends when me and one of the people I was with heard. It sounded like a retching noise mixed with a scream that was maybe medium in pitch but guttural. It was way too loud for us both to have imagined. It also happened twice maybe 10 seconds apart but far away from each other. 
I was a park ranger at my last job, and I'm pretty familiar with the wildlife in the area, and it didn't sound like anything I had heard in my time working as a ranger near that area. I also have Rebecca's the location multiple times prior and had a few weird experiences, but nothing like this. Anyone have any idea what I could have heard? This happened to me while I was in college, 20 plus years ago, and I never forgot it. It was one of the first times I ever remember seeing true fear and panic on someone's face. This part will only spatially make sense if you are familiar with Monterey, CA. I lived in the seaside area, and my college girlfriend lived in Carmel Valley. Sometimes when I would drive her home late at night, we would take a lightly used roadway called Lowerless Road, which was long, dark, and full of winding turns. It also let us out near her house so it was a minor time save. We were driving home late one night and we were chatting and laughing about something or another, as we usually did on the ride, when she looks out the window, stops mid-sentence, screams, then looks forward and yells to her. She is terrified. I floor it and ask her what is happening and she won't talk. She is literally next to me hyperventilating. I drove unsafely fast through the twists and turns of the road and a few minutes later slowed down, assuming that whatever scared her was fast in our rear view. By this point she has calmed a bit as well and I asked her again, what happened? Her first reply was you didn't see it? She then proceeds to tell me that as we were driving around the corner, she was looking out the window and my headlights lit up a human looking animal, standing along the side of the road disjointedly on all fours with a human-looking face that looked like it was hissing. My first reaction was that it might actually be a hurt person and maybe we should go back or call 911, but she was adamant that no, it was not a person, and there was no way we were going back. We got to her house a few minutes later and out of extra precaution called the local police and asked them to go and check the area. We never had any follow-up from them. Fast forward several years, 15 or so, and I was telling a co-worker who was from that area about the incident. She got really spooked and when I finished she told me that Lower Lace Grade was known for strange sightings and was a spot that UFO fanatics tend to go to. I'm not a UFO guy, which I thought was interesting. Seen it again after four months. So I've made two other posts on this but this time it's getting repetitive. This sighting was last week. It was around 8.40 p.m. so it was getting dark but not dark enough for a flashlight. I went outside to our shed we have about 20 yards from our back door to feed our mini pigs. I go out there, open it up, get the food, turn around towards the house, feed the pigs, and turn around to walk back to the shed to put the containers back in the shed. Well, as I turn around I see this white skinny figure peeking its head around the shed. After like a few seconds it just dips, silent as hell. Now I'm not sure if it was a guy who likes to watch people feed farm animals in the evening which I'm sure is a fun hobby but I don't think it's a popular hobby either. I'll let y'all know if I get attacked and die or something. My Australian crawler sightings, and the reason I sleep with all my curtains closed. I don't sleep with curtains open because of crawlers. I'm a grown-ass woman now and I still can't sleep at night with the curtains open. In fact, when I moved into my current house, I installed dual curtain rods so that even if my light-blocking curtains are open, there's a layer of privacy shears behind them to block any sight. I have seen the crawler four times. I don't truly know if it's the same one, they were all seen at different locations. It's been years since I last saw one but I still feel like they were the same creature, or at least, they knew me. The first time, I was a very small child. Perhaps four? Maybe five. My house was an old-style flood house, so it was technically two stories tall but under the house was where we kept the car and the laundry room. Upstairs was where the living area was. We were one of the only houses it was in the early days of the town and there were only a few other houses on the cul-de-sac. The back of our property was maybe 500 meters from the ocean, but you couldn't see or hear the coastline from the house. 
There were some light rainforests around in our fully fenced house. My bedroom faced the back of the property. I woke up one night, which wasn't unusual for me because I was a very light sleeper. This particular night, my parents hadn't closed my curtains. When I looked towards my window, I could see it. Keep in mind, I was on the second floor. It was looking through my window. I couldn't see much. The only light was coming from outside, but I could see the silhouette of the body. It was pale and thin, but still the frame of the creature was huge, easily two meters tall. It was hanging off my roof, holding onto the frame of my window, and even though I couldn't see its face, I just knew it was looking at me. I was terrified. It's been almost two decades since I saw it, but I can still remember the intense fear of that. It took me so much courage to get out of bed and walk to my parents' room, where I finally fell back asleep. My parents told me it was just a dream. The next time I remember seeing it, I was probably about seven or so. I had moved houses probably a few months before, and my new house, about a 16-hour drive from my old place, was a single-story home, but still on the coast of the country. It was a lot further from the ocean, about 5 km, but very much the same kind of area. We were one of the only houses in the area and I had no neighbors. I woke up one night because I heard something banging against the metal fence. In Australia we have a brand that makes fences and roofs out of corrugated metal that's been painted. They're quite common, 6 feet high cream colored metal fences. And they make an unmistakable noise when something hits them. I have no idea how anything could climb one of these fences. They're completely smooth with nothing to grab onto. Even in my teens I tried sneaking out by jumping the fence and I just slid right down again. At first when I woke up I thought some birds must have landed on the fence, but the noise continued for longer than it would take a bird to land. My next thought was that someone was trying to break into the house. I turned over in bed to face the window and saw it. Well, I actually didn't see it at first. It was very dark out and I don't remember much of the movie. As my eyes adjusted I could only just make out the figure hunched down in front of my window. Even in the hunched down pose it was still here. This time I didn't run to my parents. Their bedroom was no longer across the hall. It was all the way on the opposite side of the house. And I'd have to pass so many uncovered windows to get there. I don't remember when I fell asleep. But I eventually woke up in the morning, and once again my parents told me I must have been dreaming. However from then on, they always came into my bedroom and closed my blinds before bed. The next time I saw it, I was nine. I know I was nine because I had just moved schools and made friends with a girl who will call Casey. She invited me to stay at her house one night, and I was so excited. She was the first friend I'd made since moving schools, and it had been ages since I'd gotten to have a sleepover. Everything went great, the night was perfectly normal, and I woke up in the middle of the night to the sound of Casey crying. I sat up in bed and asked her what was wrong. She pointed towards the window, where I saw the thing again. Unfortunately for me, Casey had a nightlight, and I could see much more of the creature than I ever had before. It looked so crusty and dry. It was almost totally white, devoid of any real identifying features, except it stared at us with black eyes and mouth. Casey's window was small and had to hunch down to see us. We both got up and ran crying through the mud. She turned on the outside light and brought us back inside the bedroom, and pointed out a large gum tree outside the window that she tried to explain just had been what we saw. We argued with her. The thing we saw was right against the window, not several meters away, and it wasn't to the left, it was to the right. Casey's mom eventually let us sleep on the couch. A couple months later, Casey stayed over at my house. When I woke up in the morning Casey was gone. I asked my parents, and they told me that Casey had gotten up in the night and started crying, begging to go home. When I saw her again on Monday at school, she told me she got up at night to go to the bathroom. And when she walked past the lounge room, she could see the tall skin monster crawling through the trees at the bottom of my backyard. She never came to my house again, and I lost touch when I moved schools a year ago. I don't know what it was I saw. 
It can have been sleep paralysis. I was able to move and speak and everything. And it wasn't a dream because someone else saw it. I don't know if this relates in any way, but when my partner moved into my house a few months ago, he opened the curtains one night before bed. This time it was a full moon. I had already fallen asleep. I'm now living in a two-story house with my bedroom on the second floor again. I woke up in the middle of the night to my partner getting up and closing the curtains. When I asked him why, he told me he had a nightmare that there was a tall, skinny, white man clinging on my roof, almost like a spider, and it was peering into my bedroom. He said it must have been a hallucination. He had been all night playing video games, and when he got up from bed it jumped back onto the roof. I still haven't told him, but his description of what he saw is exactly what I saw the first time I saw the crawl. Only, now I'm living in a busy neighborhood with plenty of houses, unlike past experiences where I've been one of the only houses on the block and surrounded by forests. I have heard mimicking many times, but have always drawn it up to imagination. Sometimes I will hear my partner walk into the room and say hello at night but when I roll over I see the light coming down the hallway and I realize that he's still in the lounge room on the computer. I've heard my mother's voice a few times too. Throughout my childhood and all the homes I've lived in, we've had issues with dogs barking at nothing and security motion detector lights randomly coming on at night when nobody I don't know if those two things are related or not, but I've heard similar happenings in crawler-related stories before and thought I'd mention. So those are my stories. I don't know if I've seen a crawler, or something else, or if I've seen anything at all. But I found this subreddit and I thought hey, at least there are people who have seen things similar to me. I don't know what I ran into that way. I, I don't know how to explain this bit here. To begin with for context I am with two buddies, males, and we were at their house so we wept into the woods because we thought it would be fun. We also lived near Zinsville in Dresden, Ohio, but the weird stuff happens. We start walking and everything is fine and we feel like we are watched. Me first then another on then the last friend. That's the first thing. Next is twigs start snapping towards his neighbor's house but we see nothing in snap. Lastly as we are moving across this maybe a max 1 inch deep water creek we hear. The bellowing if it can be described as it. It was a mixture between the deer buck and the deepness slash guttural sound of the bed. We dot the IT. As we are running out we keep hearing it not getting louder but we make it out we never saw it and we don't think it saw us. I'm skating 3 hours after it happened I apostrophe am dot scared and don't know what it is slash was dot pls help me identify this thing I'm scared we are in a house right now but we don't know what will happen. I'm not sure if it was a crawler but it's the closest thing I can find. So we, me and my dad, were driving back from one of my classes at night a while ago and we were just talking when he suddenly swerved. When he did I looked out my window and for a second or two I saw a tall lanky white figure. It had a long left arm so long that I couldn't see but the very top of the hand. I wasn't scared just a bit where I it out. I asked why he swerved and he said there was a coyote on the side of the road. I never saw the coyote but he swears it was there. I'm not sure what it was but a crawler is the closet to what I saw. I'm in Missouri. That's about it. It was just where it and if anyone knows about anything else that would fit the description I would love to hear. I want to share what my boyfriend saw when we were together. Yesterday, we were at a park when it was pitch black. The park is about 600 acres and it goes into the mountains. We were sitting on a bench when he turned to look at something. His eyes opened so wide and asked me if I saw that. I replied no, I wasn't looking in the same direction at him. I thought he saw something far out by the trees. He asked to leave and quickly grabbed all of our things and we literally sped walk like the Olympics out of the park. He told me what he saw was a white creature hunched over staring at us. He said it was really big. So I'm not sure if this is a possible sighting? Edit, I forgot to add a bit of detail. My boyfriend gave the description as the creature having upper broad shoulders, being very skinny, 
and he also heard some noises. Possible sighting in Auburn, Alabama. Unfortunately, this story may be rather short as I only got a glance at it. Additionally, this happened only about 20 minutes ago, so I'm still shaken up by it. Regardless, I'm a student at Auburn University. I was on the phone with someone venting about why business majors need to learn calculus. Since me and her kept talking, I decided to not go straight back to my apartment and instead drove down a county road while we kept conversing. The road is mostly surrounded by trees with some sparse houses and the occasional gas station or other business sprinkled along one side of the road. I knew I needed to get back to my apartment to keep studying, and so after four or so miles, I turned around and was headed back. A few minutes later, still driving down the same road, and in a stretch with some buildings with their lights onto my driver's side, I glanced at my passenger side mirror saw a pale humanoid body leap out of a tree and land in the ditch to the right of my truck. It was rainy and dark, so I couldn't see entirely clearly, but there was enough illumination from a light on in a parking lot to make out human-like arms, legs, and just how white its skin was. It looked like it was curled up in a ball as well, which doesn't make sense why it would do that while jumping, but I know I could make out the clear silhouette of arms, legs, and I could tell that it was human size. I immediately pushed on the brakes to see if I could get a better look and I swear I saw the red brake light glinting off the white skin as it moved along the ditch the opposite direction from me and back towards the tree line. It was like I stopped thinking as what I just saw registered with me and the shock hit me. I looked in the mirror and my face was as pale as the thing's skin. The girl I was talking to had continued talking during all this, as she didn't have any idea that this happened and I realized that I'd responded to the last few things she'd said with sure or other short responses like that. I thought about telling her what I saw but I decided against it as I didn't want to sound insane. I drove back to my apartment and told one of my roommates about it who also is interested in things like this. He believed me and we ended up joking about it a bit which calmed me down. Sorry that this isn't the most descriptive. I think I'm still shocked at what I saw but I wanted to see if y'all think there's any reasonable explanation or if it's what I think it is. What freaks me out even more is that I was on this subreddit earlier today, I've always been interested in stuff like this, and I stumbled across a comment where a guy said that his brother also had a possible sighting in Auburn as well. Please let me know what y'all think. I'm still not sure what I saw. This happened back in summer of 2013 when I was 13. My mom and I were in Florida visiting my grandma and him. After spending the week or so at grandma's place in Odessa we drove north to St. Augustine to spend the next week at a hotel by the beach and visit with my aunt as well. On the second night there we were driving to pick up my aunt who was working the night shift at Dennis. On the drive. There was a guy walking down the road with his back facing us with a backpack and all. Possibly homeless. It was dark and right by a stretch of wood so my mom doesn't see him at first and nearly hits him. When she notices and swerves to avoid the vehicular manslaughter charges, I look out the window to see who this guy is. Nothing about the guy walking seemed out of the ordinary. It's what I saw behind him that still sticks with me. It was this humanoid creature that was crouched down, looking like it might have already been eating something. Keep in mind I was in a moving vehicle so I couldn't get the best look at it, but it almost looked to have old ripped up clothes on and a bit of hair on its head, like a human. But its eyes. They were huge. They glowed too like when you see an animal's eyes looking at you at night. When it looked up it snarled and I could almost see its teeth. They looked sharp like they could bite right through you with no effort. Its skin was almost white with a tint of green and looked skinny and long. Knees up to its head when crouching. It had to have been no more than 10 feet away from the pedestrian walking on the side of the road. It took me a minute to register what I just saw and if it was even what I thought it was, which I still, almost 9 years later couldn't tell. I was just quiet and in shock for the rest of the night. My mom, Aunt and I went back to the hotel room, 
They drank and caught up while I just tried to watch TV and not think about what I saw that night. I still don't know what I saw. My knowledge on Florida cryptids is very limited and I don't think it was a SW since they are more in the southwest part of the US than the southeast. This happened in October of 2020 in Pelham and Helena in Alabama. As I lived near the border of the two towns and followed it into Helena from Pelham. This is a long story but I wanted to be as detailed as possible however my interaction with this thing was over an hour and a half and a lot to talk about. It's been bugging me a long time and as much as I try to rationalize what happened I can't so I will try my best to tell my story and hope someone will Mumbai have had a similar incident happen to them and will be able to get a better understanding of this. On with what happened. I am living with my girlfriend in Pelamal we live together in a development. We were doing our regular thing playing video games relaxing late around 1am. Can get exact dates and times if anyone interested. Anyways I go outside to smoke a cigarette and I hear a woman yell someone help me as I live in a development I think nothing of it but it continues and I become curious as the yelling continues over 5 minutes and I become a little concerned. So I start to pay closer attention to it and I believe the yelling is coming across the main road near my development in a small patch of woods. So now I'm thinking it is a fox as they make a almost identical sound to a woman and thought okay cool a fox, but it continues to scream someone help me clearly. I am not trying to approach it anymore and just almost try to make sure I'm hearing this right. Then it screams please help, and please someone help. This is clear and I'm sure now that it is not a fox. I approach closer because I think someone needs help but the screams are moving away from me out of the small patch of forest next to the road down the road about 50 yards to another development across the street. I enter the development and now I'm 90% sure this is someone's TV or someone has a Halloween decoration that is making this noise but it bothers me that I thought. I was standing right next to where I had heard it originally. I am now walking in this development and I text my girlfriend about what happened just in case someone did need help but it was probably nothing. I am trying to follow this screaming as it continues almost two or three times of my nude always same phrases please help me someone help as I am walking down the road it seems more difficult to follow and it seems to be coming from much further away now. So I decided to just go home. If someone needed help I thought why would they be running so fast as they would have to be to cover the distances. As I am walking back home after 4 or 5 minutes it then starts again much more loudly and I now have a much better idea that this is coming from this larger forest near a cell phone tower. I am now hearing the screams in the woods about 50 yards from me in the woods. I am standing on the street and as I am listening to this I notice that it is moving quickly parallel. It moves 50 yards to my right stop screams help me then runs about another 50 yards to my left and I am baffled that anyone could move so quickly and this went on for 5 minutes. It only stopped to speak and ran again and this didn't make any sense to me in any way. I wasn't sure to enter the forest and try and help this person. But I still couldn't see it. Almost as if it was crawling as I saw the bushes moving and heard the twigs snapping and the screaming. Then it screamed a different phrase, over and over it screamed why aren't you helping me. It did this rapidly for almost two minutes. Then it made a different noise. It started making a very low almost grunting growling noise. This is when I became terrified. I couldn't rationalize this. I am hearing the women screaming and this low grunting growling noise over and over. I realize this isn't my imagination this is insane. I then realize how far I am from my house how long this had been going on for and everything almost came together. This thing wants me to come into this forest. It isn't running back and forth at a 50 yard distance anymore it's almost running back and forth 20 yards and very close to me about 10 yards. It refuses almost to leave the woods but wants me badly to come into the woods. The grunting becomes way more frequent along with its movements almost running faster and faster back and forth. I think I see something low to the ground possibly white. It's hard to tell and it's moving. 
I am also scared so much so I tried to go to the camera button on my phone couldn't find it and that grunting was terrifying. I stopped and decided to call 911 immediately. I know whatever this thing is isn't friendly as wanting me in the woods. I never heard of this happening to anyone and that's not good that tells me this thing probably doesn't leave anyone alive at hunts and I was in trouble. I tell the operator where I am and that a woman is screaming. Once the Helena police show up it stops. I am so sorry for this long story most people will be mad they read this whole thing but if someone experienced something similar it could be a huge help to the both of us. And if it did please contact me. The only person I told this to was my girlfriend and we ended up coming to the conclusion that it was a kid running around with scary noises on a boombox or something. I know this isn't true please someone help me. I am pretty terrified just to go outside at night. I never believed something like this thing could exist it's messing with my head. Weird things have been happening around our area. Okay, I live in central Missouri, in the suburbs, right next to our house is some light woods, a creek, and a mile or so down a thick forest. First off, my friend was walking through a trail that cuts through the woods alone at night, and heard a weird growling noise, they said like a bear and a dog growl. A while ago I did a generic whistle to get someone's attention, and I heard something whistle back from the woods. And the other day, it smelled off like diarrhea and rotting eggs, which I have heard they have that smell. And little over two weeks ago, my sister heard whistling and a baby crying in the middle of the night. I've been learning how to drive and I found a pretty perfect dirt road to practice on. Nobody ever really drives down it because it's very rural and right next to a major highway that's much more convenient to use to get anywhere. I've been getting practice night driving there because it's so empty and a perfect straight line so not a lot of dangers other than deer slash other animals. The entire road is just corn fields and country houses. The other night I went there to drive and everything was going super well until I looked over at my right window and saw a white figure standing on the side of the road. It was so tall I couldn't see its head, I could only see up to its chest. It looked like it was probably 8 feet tall and it was super skinny. It had really long arms that went down past its waist and skinny legs. It didn't have any fur and it wasn't wearing any clothing, just smooth, white skin. My mom in the passenger seat was looking towards me talking so she didn't see it, but it was right next to her window. It scared me so bad I actually swerved the car. I pointed it out and kept driving, then turned around in someone's driveway and came back to see what it was. There was absolutely nothing there, no trees, no signs, no animals or people. It was just a completely empty field. If it helps, this happened in the lower peninsula of Michigan. When I went back another day during the daytime I still couldn't see anything. This is my kid's story but I'm inclined to believe him. I just don't know what to make of it either. We live in a rural area slash dead end road. We walk it daily so we're very familiar with the scenery and the neighbor's habits. He likes to look at the stars so he went out for his last walk around 9 p.m. Came in out of breath, I thought maybe he heard coyotes and they spooked him. He said walking past a group of trees he thought he saw movement so he shined a flashlight that way and saw a gray face peeking at him from behind one of the trees. After googling, he showed me a picture of a rake and said it looked similar but smaller eyes that reflected green. He thought at first it was a deer, but he couldn't see the rest of the body as he walked and it didn't move, just kept watching. He said he walked as calmly as he could and watched it from the corner of his eye for as long as he could see it discreetly, and as soon as he got to our immediate neighbor's house he ran. I wanted to call it a deer, but those trees have no tall brush around them, and three to four feet or so between each tree you could easily tell if a deer was standing there. 
and the group of trees are roughly 10 yards from the road, so near enough to see clearly given the heavy duty flashlight he takes. We went out tonight to see if we could see it, but nothing. Not that I wanted to, but he insisted. He needed to stumble upon it again with a witness for validation, I'm more live and let live, you stay out there and I'll stay in here. But it's really bothering him and things have been strange around here lately. So, any ideas? Skinwalker in Arizona? My friend found this from a guy in Arizona three years ago. He says it happened at 125th and Buckeye in the Angua Fria River Bottom or Ligas River Bottom. But Las Ligas is a park and I couldn't find a Ligas River. The Agua Fria River is just down the street but on Google Maps, it's all dried up, but the video has a river in it. Story is they heard some weird noises, checked it out and saw a guy they thought was on drugs. They asked how he got there and he said the energy brought me here, or something. And then stands up and they notice his arms look abnormally long and they freak out and it starts chasing them on all fours like a dog. I need to clarify that while religious I'm not particularly superstitious. Despite looking at and exploring many abandoned locations the sites of horrific tragedies like old battlegrounds and massacres I never experienced or truly believed in anything paranormal or unexplained. This story is the one and only experience I have that has made me even consider the possibility of otherworldly forces or things I can't rationally explain. And if I had to experience this personally I would assume with a great deal of certainty that it's complete BS. So for some context of the area I was in, my great uncle owns a lot of land in northern Saskatchewan, Canada. Some of this was pasture that he uses for cattle and half of one of his largest properties is fenced off and the cows can't go there. In the sectioned off lactose free zone the entire place is densely packed with foliage, I mean when I hunt them almost only use game trails and small clearings because a lot of the brush is too thick to get through without a machete. The ground itself is blotted with some small steep hills towards the entrance to the property. There is one main dirt road that goes from a Texas gate at the entrance all the way back to the farthest side of the property. Coming off the road in the hilly area we have a camp. The camp consists of a camperized ACTO trail, picture a big yellow sea camp in front of the entrance. Gated with barbed wire because sometimes my uncle will move his cattle to different fenced off areas of the land, with my mother's pull behind trailer that we can't pull anymore sits perpendicular to the Atco and a tiny dingy 70s 14 feet pull behind me. A family member gave me so I could have privacy at camp and not have to sleep with my mom. Needless to say we spent a lot of time in the woods, and both my mom's and my door were facing the direction of the Atco. Meaning I had a suedo alleyway between my door and my mom's wall and finally in front of the Atco trailer we have a fire pit. Close next to it in front of my mom's place there is a table for food prep. Sorry for the lengthy explanation but I feel like in order for the sequence of events to make sense, You'll need to understand where I was in the space and maybe locations will make my reference points more clear for explaining later. We have always had lots of wildlife like big cats and bears that could harm people. I actually had to put down a bear that came into our camp and was far too comfortable with people not too too long after. So from so since I was young I learned to recognize the sounds and sights around me. While cautious I'm rarely afraid of anything out there especially given that I'm usually armed when I'm not with multiple people. The summer before last we had a remarkably calm experience. There were hardly any critters we had to deal with and it seemed the bears and pests were leaving us alone. No droppings, many small game trails had grown in, and the camp that usually took two days to set up was exactly how we had left it the previous trip. It was peaceful. It being summer I filled the days with woodworking fishing trips and the occasional hike looking berries and for setting traps for rabbits grouse and other small game that could be prepared quickly over the fire with my family. But mostly came up unlucky. 
Regardless of the seeming lack of disturbances, we always were careful at night making sure to have a bright light and keep lookout for anything. After the first week we began hearing noises around the camp very late at night that would drive the dog insane all night to the point we just had to keep her inside but never saw anything. It almost felt like whatever it was was probing and checking out our camp nightly but always staying far enough away and hidden enough that we could never see it with our spotlights. Then one night just like any other. Bar the eerie quietness that usually came around that time. I left my mother's camper a couple hours after the daylight and had disappeared with a lantern-style red light. As a rarity I didn't have anything to defend myself, no gun no bear spray not even a knife. So I was a little bit more cautious and observant than usual given I felt more vulnerable. As I walked from the exit of my mom's camper I looked around for a minute scanning the tree line and then began the loop around to my door. I panned as I walked from right to left from the entrance to the fire pit and then to the table. It was there just behind the table not 20 feet away that I saw a naked extremely pale almost gray, probably just because of the dark, lanky humanoid figure standing still and directly facing me. As it caught my gaze I felt my heart drop and immediately went cold I probably only stared for 3 seconds at most but it felt like several minutes as my brain processed what I was seeing. It stood somewhere between 6.5 and 7.5 feet tall with low slumped shoulders and had a frail thin body that reminded me of photos from the Holocaust but with disproportionately long legs. I couldn't see the legs fully because of the table but what I could see looked like sinew and skin stretched over the leanest and thinnest body I've ever seen. I know I might be sounding like a dramatic man but I couldn't describe the primal fear and shock that came over me. It was like a combination of the feeling you'd get being threatened at gunpoint and hearing something stalk you in the woods but ramped up to the point where I could barely think. I couldn't make out many details of the face but the light cast small shadows on the face that made it look like it had shallow features similar to a nose and lips and eye sockets that were smooth down. Almost like Voldemort and Slenderman's love child. I ran like my life depended on it, TBH I thought it might have the last few feet to my door. Once inside I grabbed a shotgun stuffed several shells in my pocket. Loaded the gun aimed it at the door. I sat in silence with the hammer cocked back waiting for the door knob to turn or the frosted glass to break. I sat and waited for hours into the early morning expecting to see or hear something but I never did, not even any foliage or items moving. Eventually around 4 a.m. I lowered my guard prop the shotgun next to my bed and hesitantly went to sleep. When I woke up hardly believe in what I seen the night before I was around the area to see if there was any shapes or items that I could have mistaken and warped in my mind into the creature I saw. But the only thing in that area was a table with some pots and pans on it that were blackened from the fire. I'm still not quite sure what to make of it but I do have some ideas from what I witnessed, given the fact that I believe it was stalking us and staking out our camp for several nights along with positioning itself between me and my mother's camp, directly in front of the path that I took every night leads me to believe that it had some level of intelligence comparable to how a person laying a trap or setting something up in an area where they know Terry's activity. As I mentioned I looked around after exiting my mother's camper and never heard anything which tells me that either it was waiting there watching or it's so incredibly quiet that I never heard it move even a leaf. Which wouldn't line up with us hearing the disturbances from the previous nights. It also left as quietly as it appeared which leaves three options either it went out of its way to use the same road entering the camp that a person would for convenience, it silently crept out through the game trails or it didn't leave until after I had lowered my guard and my adrenaline died down. I'm honestly not sure which option is more likely or more off-putting. I'm not really sure what I saw but I know it wasn't human. The photos and drawings of these crawlers reminded me a great deal of it. So I thought I'd share maybe one of you could enlighten me as to what it could have been doing or its intent or provide an explanation to its behavior. I know it's not worth much online but hand to god I swear this isn't a piece of fanciful writing and I would be happy to share any other details if anyone wants more info or further clarification.
This is a very long story and I'm not the best at writing things out but I'll try. I live in Georgia, the state, and a rural town not too far from a major city. There's a set of woods that's behind our house and it divides two neighborhoods and it's about a mile wide at that. Strange occurrences have always surrounded these woods. Small things like random trash, tarp set. I should mention it's more swampy marsh than wood so it makes camping in there impossible. One night I was taking our dog out. He stays in the back half of the house due to him not liking the other dogs. I took him out the side door and walked around the house to the fence. For some reason when we left the house he was absolutely terrified. He didn't want to go out. Very unusual for a dog who's quick to snatch someone's soul with prompted. Not thinking about it we pushed on him. After he tinkled, we walked back. This is when I noticed it. Or rather heard it. Crunching of leaves. At first I thought it was one of our dozen cats on the property until I realized it was matching my steps. If I walked you could hear it walking. If I stopped, it stopped. There's a small clearing between woods where one of sheds is. That's when we saw it. My dog was first to see something and then I saw some. I do know. Creature? It was taller than the shed so maybe a good 8 feet tall and it darted across the clearing at a crazy fast speed. My dog who again isn't scared of anything bolts so fast I dropped his leash and he ran to the door whining. I was quickly behind him. Once we were inside I quickly bolted the door and ran to tell my girlfriend what happened. She immediately wanted to investigate saying it's probably a woodland creature. Armed with two flashlights we went out the front door. As we walked towards the wood line we could hear something moving around. It sounded maybe 200 yards away. As we scanned with our flashlights we saw nothing but kept hearing. Then we heard it get closer and closer until it was maybe 20 feet away. Still nothing. No eyes, not even an animal call. Just rustling. My girlfriend now scared heads for the house. I decided to check with the neighbors to see if maybe one of their many dogs got out. When I arrived at his house my neighbor, who will call Dave, explained that all his dogs were accounted for. Curious he came to investigate. This is when I noticed that whatever this thing was followed me along the wood line to Dave's house and was now behind Dave's house. Gun in hand we went into his backyard scanning for something. We could hear it rustling or maybe running. About 100 yards away in thick swampy woods. Way too thick for a person to walk and let alone run in. Then it stopped. It was dead silent. Scanning and on edge we hear and see nothing and then bam all of a sudden it was 5 feet in front of sprinting at me. It slammed the fence so hard it rocked it back and forth. Dave, scared shot randomly at well. Nothing. We never saw it. Never had to get close to us. Again as I mentioned the woods are thick. Too thick to run and so what teleported silently in front of us and slammed the gate. Spook we were about to run. Then we heard it. It was human in nature but not English. It sounded. Alien-like? Not a known language. Dave, a hunter for the last 40 years still to this day can't explain what that was. Anyway after we heard that we bolted. He covered me and I ran to my house. Not 10 minutes later we both hear a loud explosion coming from the woods. It shook our houses and flickered our power. I ran outside to see what it was and of course nothing but when Dave came out and confirmed he felt the same thing we were both once again terrified. Moments later a few strangers from the neighborhood came driving down to our cul-de-sac and they all agreed the blast sound they heard came from behind our house. 911 was called and the two police officers interviewed us separately. Our stories matched. The responding officers refused to go anywhere near those woods. They took the report and left. To this day we're still not sure what that encounter was. Also Dave doesn't go outside at night anymore. It spooked him that bad. The next night, earlier in the day my mother-in-law, a police officer for a town 40 minutes away, installed two motion-activated trail cams along the woods edge. They were brand new. Keep that detail in mind. Thinking maybe we'd see something we waited for nightfall. 
Later that evening I went outside to feed our outdoor cats. That's when I heard it again. Rustling. This time not taking any chances I ran inside and told everyone what I heard. They all piled by the back door and urged me to go out there and look. Reluctantly I agreed. I took my flashlight and walked to the edge of the woods. Knowing there was a trail cam covering this area I figured if it got me it would be on camera and my sacrifice wouldn't be for nothing. As I got to the woods edge I could hear it still rustling. I'm shaking at this point because I could tell it was maybe less than 15 yards in front of me. Everyone at the door was watching me and could hear this thing. Then it got quiet. For a moment it was gone, or so I thought. Just as I'm scanning with my flashlight trying desperately to see a normal woodland creature so I can laugh this whole thing away boom something fell out of a tree and hit the ground so hard it shook the soil beneath my feet. It was so close to that I was sure it was gonna lunge out the brush and snag me. I dropped my flashlight and ran 100 yards back to the house in what felt like 2 seconds. I screamed get in the house as everyone was already scampering into the house. They heard and felt the thud too. Our neighbor Dave, called my mother-in-law to ask what that loud crash was. For him to have heard it from well over 700 yards away is insane to me. Once the adrenaline died down we realized that this happened right next to the trail camp. Problem solved we got evidence of this thing. The next morning we checked the SD cards on the trail camps. They have videos up until 11.47 pm. The rest is corrupted. They were both brand new trail cams and SD cards. We reset everything and set them back up and to this day we've still never encountered the creature again nor caught anything on the camera. I've got a short account, and I don't know if this qualifies, since I didn't see it, but someone I was with, but here goes. So, two of my friends, who are a married couple, and I were walking on my family land. It's about 170 acres and heavily wooded with both pines and hardwoods, and heavily trailed. It was dark but my friends wanted me to take them out walking on the trails. A couple of neighbor's dogs followed us a coonhound and a great Pyrenees, and we walked south and east to my camping area. We were hanging out at my camping spot when behind us, further back the trail we had come down the dogs started acting strange. We were looking back, and they came out of the woods to our left and stood on the trail. The Great Pyrenees started growling real low, and looking defensive. The coonhound is a goofball, but he was also acting disturbed about something. We were both looking back down the trail to the west. I immediately got quite a strange and serious feeling, it was a bit ominous. I've learned to trust my gut, which I recommend to anybody in the woods, or if around a person or animal that you feel instinctively is threatened. Anyway, I said to my friends, we'd better get back to the house. To get my point across I sort of grimly added now. Well, we were heading west on the trail, and the dogs, if I remember correctly had vacated the earth. While walking, I looked back and saw my one friend, the wife, looking into the woods off the trail and stagger back a few steps. I and her husband asked her what was wrong. By the way, this is the area where the dogs had previously been growling at. She said, I'll tell you when we get back, I don't want to scare you. He's kind of easily spooked low. So, we get back and ask what she saw. She tells us that she felt she needed to look off the trail, into the trees, and she saw something halfway behind a tree, looking at her. We all had headlamps on, she said it was pale slash whitish, with an oval kind of shaped head. Looked like it was crouching, with long limbs. She kept stressing how skinny it was, particularly the limbs. She said it had a surprised look on its face, like it didn't expect us to be there. Myself and friends slash relatives use the trails regularly, but not at night. She said that the thing was bobbing back and forth in kind of a creepy way, like moving its head behind the tree and swaying its head and shoulders back rhythmically to look at her. She said it didn't appear to be aggressive at the moment but looked scary. I pulled up the famous trail cam pic of the rake, or whatever it is, and she got a shocked look on her face and nodded yes. However, she made clear that it wasn't exactly the same. 
The next night, I was on the back porch, and heard a freaky, very very shrill scream come from the woods. I don't know if the two were related, but I've lived in the country for most of my life, and I've never heard anything like it. This is one of multiple things that have happened around here, but this is the only one that I know of involving this creature. This is in North Alabama. Thanks for listening. Hi all, I'm not sure if this is the right place to post this but it's been freaking me out for the past few days since it's happened and I wanted to see if anyone had any advice. I want to start by saying that everything that I'm about to talk about is true, and if you don't believe me, I'm sorry. I live in a woods in Northwest Ohio. My house is back about half a mile in the woods down a long driveway, and my property is surrounded by trees from each side except for the back, which has a field that alternates soybeans and corn every year. We're a few minutes away from a very small village and about half an hour out from bigger towns. I just wanted to give some background into the area before I say what happened in case that helps at all. I've had weird stuff happen before. I've encountered what I think are not deers. Once there was one in my yard walking around apple trees, which isn't uncommon but the thing was huge and ugly and it just looked wrong. There was also one next to a country road I was driving down with my friend once. A few years ago I was dog sitting before I had a dog and I was out with the dog walking near the field and he turned around as there was a huge splash in our pond and started growling and howling. Other than that, the dog was really friendly and I'd never heard him growl before. I joked saying it was a frogman, like the Loveland frogman, but ignored it for the most part. Last year my family got a dog of our own and he's a hound dog so he chases and barks at everything but sometimes he gets weird about the pond too, and he'll growl and howl it. He doesn't really growl other than that. But the incident that I came here to talk about happened a few days ago. This year is a corn year in the field behind our house, which I always hate because I can't see out past the first couple rows and I've always thought it's creepy. Before crops are planted, I like to rock hound and metal detect in the field and surrounding fields so I know the land very well. I have found Native American artifacts in the field before too, and there's a couple woods scattered throughout the fields and a big creek runs through it too. I mainly stick to the field directly behind my house because I don't want to wander out too far. The farthest out I've gone is probably no more than a mile. A couple days ago I was out with my dog, walking along the line of dirt between the trees in the back of my property in the field, when my dog started growling at the corn. It obviously scared the hell out of me and I was yelling it and telling him to stop. When I was little we would get coyotes around there too, so I figured it was a coyote. Since I didn't want myself or my dog to get hurt by the coyote I started walking back to the house but my dog wasn't having it. He was pulling on the leash and baying and howling and losing his mind. He doesn't usually bay and howl like that unless he's treat a squirrel, so the fact that he was just screaming into the corn freaked me out. We started walking again, and then I heard a cat meow from the corn. I was like, oh, okay, it's just a cat. Cool. But I have a cat, and there's plenty of barn cats that cross our property and my dog has never lost his mind over a cat like that before. So I keep tugging on his leash and I'm like dude let's go. You're freaking me out. And the cat keeps meowing and it's getting like uncomfortably loud for a cat meow. It sounded like it was a lot closer than it was. And then the cat started growling but it sounded like a big dog. Like big growls. Then the corn started rustling, bigger than what a cat could be. Luckily at that point I was just about back to my yard and the growling kind of developed into what sounded like a yell slash scream from a person. I was dragging my dog, my dog was growling, his hair on his back was sticking up, I was scared and shaking. It was absolutely terrifying. I went back into my house and told my family what happened and they were just like okay, cool, whatever but I was nearly in tears. It was scary. Again, I don't know if this is the right place to leave this story, So I'm sorry if it isn't, but those sounds have been replaying in my mind over and over and I'd love to get some explanation or something on whatever happened out there. Nothing like that has happened since, not that I want it to. 
But yeah, if anyone has any explanation or advice, please let me know. Yesterday, I decided to end it all. So I went out into the woods at dawn, planning to take my own life in the splendor of the sunrise, a final moment of light in what had been a persistently dark life. Looking back now, it seems lame, almost comically dramatic. But I'm not posting this to talk about myself, and my reasons for having wanted to die are not important. I now want to live, need to live, if only to relate a story that isn't my own, but one that is, unfortunately, ultimately details the end of another's life. I found a leather-bound journal, evidently a fairly expensive one, judging by the page quality and general construction, lying in a shallow ditch, near the spot where I'd planned on taking my own life. The ground around it was disturbed, as if, sometime during the previous night, its owner had struggled to superficially bury it before being dragged away. There was a great swath etched away in the dirt to suggest and support this conclusion. Aside from the dirt, there were a few stains on the surface of the journal, and more than one page was covered with, or stuck to another body, dark splotches, presumably blood. Darkly intrigued, I decided to forestall my self-destruction, and left the woods with it in my possession. I've always enjoyed reading, especially the journals and stories of people who've endured terrible or chaotic events, and my curiosity was no less potent at that moment, despite my resolution to die. Thankfully, I hadn't announced my suicide, directly or subtly, to anyone, and was able to return to my home without having to explain myself or dismiss words. I read the journal once, and then when my nerves return to me and I'm finished pacing around my bedroom, I read it again, this time with a morbid fascination. I've now decided to copy the entries, word for word, onto my computer in a document, and will be uploading them online, so that this person's tragic, grisly, and terrifying story can be shared with the world. They cannot do it themselves, and having found the journal, it's now my duty to give voice to their tragedy. It is a long story, so I will relate it in parts. I can only copy so much at a time before becoming filled with anxiety and a sympathetic terror. There seem to be a few entries missing, most notably in the beginning, where the person's story seems to pick up in the middle of the horrific experience. Later on, they make vague suggestions of the nightmare's origin, but the first entry is merely a recounting of the terror after it had already emerged. So, without further delay, here is the first entry, it must have stalked me for hours before I even noticed it. Once I realized I was being hunted, the signs were hard to miss. The scattering of animals ahead of me, despite my light-footed navigation, the eerie silence they left in their wake, broken only by a faint, never too far away howl. The feeling, that evolutionarily ingrained animal sense of imminent danger, of something tracking me. When I reached the river, my instincts told me to cross it, but there was nothing but darkness on the other side. The woods there were utterly untraversed, it was obvious that no one had ever gone that far into this particular area of the wilderness. There were no guide signs, no paths, no warnings. It was immediately foreboding, and suggested perils far worse than just getting lost in the woods. Common sense told me to follow the river, to hope that I'd come across other people, some structure or fixture of civilization. For the first time in a while, I ignored common sense, and followed my vaguer instincts. Leaping into the river, I dashed across and quickly mounted the opposite bank. I wanted to immediately push forward into the tree line, but that primal sense of self-preservation told me to look back, and held me to see my pursuer, so that I'd later be able to identify and avoid him. I was then somehow certain that a conflict was imminent, that I'd have to face off against him, against him. Dripping wet, with the moon hovering dismally amidst dark clouds just above me, I turned back toward the part of the woods from which I'd come. And standing there, in clear view, highlighted in an errant ray of moonlight, was the thing that had been chasing me for hours, the dog man. He was nude from the waist down, and his body, intimidatingly muscular, shone in the moonlight, the sweat falling thickly from his corded muscles. But the most awful thing about him, the thing that sent me spinning and running headfirst into that dense, nigh lightless part of the woods, was his head. It wasn't a human head, but a dog's, the skull shape, face, and ears all unmistakably came. The nostrils flared in his pronounced snout, the jaws hung open, 
exhaling a thick vapor and slabbering disgustingly. Only the eyes, uncannily blue, showed any semblance of humanity in that unreal, monstrously incongruous visage. As I sped past, and through, the underbrush, I heard a howl, long and malignant, echo skyward. And, almost automatically, my pace quickened when I realized that the howl was not dying out, but growing closer. I've never been a particularly unlucky person, but I can say that the incident that occurred shortly after my flight into the denser part of the wood was one of the unluckiest moments any human being has ever experienced. Through some sort of sixth sense or re-emergent animal intuition, I've effortlessly and thoughtlessly leapt over loose vines, rocks, and other ground-level obstacles during the first few minutes of my ride. But abruptly veering to my right to avoid a tree, I came face to face with an owl, of all things, mid-flight. It flew right into my face, shrieked madly, and sent me careening to the ground with the force of the collision and the mad flutter of its wings. Dizzied, I watched it arc toward a tree and perch itself upon a branch, where it then began to hoot loudly and obnoxiously, as if meaning to spitefully alert the dog man of its interaction with me. Before I had completely risen to my feet and brushed myself off, I heard the approaching, the heavily pounding, footsteps of the dog man. I also heard his breathing, part and bestial, and this sent me running off again, still a bit disorientated from my jarring collision with that stupid bird. I didn't have to run for long, because after a few more dips and dodges I came upon the mouth of the cave. Knowing that I'd soon have to stop to rest, and not wanting to do so out in the open, in his territory, I sprinted into the cave. The moon's light only reached a few feet into the interior, and then there was just total blackness beyond that. I slowed and extended my hands out sideways, so that I could feel along the walls, which were fairly narrow. The walls, and the floor, were dry, and more than once I felt my hands slip across the silken threads of some spiders, hopefully, abandoned trap. Eventually, after what seemed like an hour of slow and downwardly angled trudging, I sensed the space ahead of me open up. There was a perceptible vastness about the darkness before me, and as I continued on my hands abruptly lost contact with the walls. Dropping them, I strode a little more surely ahead, confident that I had entered some sort of subterranean chamber. There were a few faint sounds high above me, though nothing sounded or echoed with any degree of clarity. I heard nothing behind me, and felt somewhat relaxed, the dogman seemed to have lost my trail. Now that things had calmed down, common sense then returned to me, demanding an audience, and I remembered that I had a phone. Before, my mind had been entirely focused on the state, no other thoughts but that singular impetus towards immediate survival had been formed. But now, standing in that lightless, curiously open space beneath the woods, I was able to think a little clearer. I pulled my phone out of my pocket, checked the reception, no signal, and turned on the flashlight feature. Sweeping the beam across the cave chamber's floor, I mostly saw a strangely smooth though definitely earthen surface, occasionally blemished by dark, unidentifiable stains. There were no objects that I could immediately see, though there were small, amorphous piles, it was hard to tell if they were collections of dust, ash, or clumps of fur. Not wanting to disturb them, and leave evidence of my presence, I gave each little pile a wide berth where I could, and continued on further into the chamber, my light held out before me. Shining it up to the ceiling showed nothing, only a skyward gulf of blackness that my phone's light couldn't hope to overcome. Keeping it level with my vision brought the same results, though I was happy that I could at least navigate without fear of suddenly walking into a wall, or off a precipice. Eventually, my foot struck against something, and I froze, the sound of the object skittering across the surface echoed audibly throughout the cavernous expanse. Not a moment later, I heard a distant, inhumanly sustained howl, and realized with a sudden spike of terror that it had come from the mouth of the cave. Panicking, I swept my flashlight across the cave floor, and eventually found the object, a leather-bound journal. Scooping it up so that I wouldn't again kick it, I then hurried further on, desperate to find some place to hide. My light bobbed back and forth, falling only on the perpetually flat, unexplainably smooth floor. All the while from behind, and growing closer, I heard that monster's ungodly shriek. Just when the howl seemed to enter and deepen in the chamber, becoming even more terrible in their suggestions of bestial insanity, my light fell upon a small mound of fractured rocks, 
a boulder that perhaps had fallen from some higher position years or even decades before. I turned off my light and crouched behind it. Not a second later, I heard the patter of bare feet on rock, and the semi-human breathing of the dog man. I listened motionlessly, whilst praying that my quickening heartbeat would not be heard by the beast. It seemed to sniff around for a moment, and I prayed that the sheer spaciousness of the room would serve to make the detection of my scent a little harder for me. After a few more moments of searching, it apparently gave up. The sounds of its scent-seeking nostrils were replaced by a strange, hoarsely guttural cachination, as if it had heard a sick joke or witnessed something morbidly funny. It went on for a few moments, then stopped as abruptly as it had started. After this, there was only a heavy, tension-filled silence, during which I imagined the creature stealthily stalking around the chamber in a renewed search of its prey. But after the passage of what couldn't have been less than 10 minutes, there was still only silence, and I ventured to peek around the rock's corner. Though the room was dark, I could still see the vague figure of the dog man, and almost screamed aloud at the sight of him, only a few feet away. He was crouched, with his arms across his chest so that the hands rested on the opposite shoulder, with his abominable head held down, in a posture that suggested sleep or a gesture of reverent contemplation. Against both instinct and common sense, I held out my hand and twiddled my fingers, desiring to know if it were truly asleep. When it didn't react to my baiting activity, a great weight seemed to lift from me. I didn't move from my hiding place, but allowed my body to relax a little. Using the light of my phone screen, not the flashlight function itself, I then examined the journal and found its pages entirely empty. There were no hints as to how it had come to lie on the floor of the cave, but it was obviously old. There was a smell of earth and ageness about it. And someone had apparently desired to use it at some point. An ink pen was taped to the back of it. Despite the dogman's strange and sudden dormancy, I knew that it would be suicide to try and sneak past it. Neither did I want to venture deeper into the cave, where who knows what other horrors might lie. So, for now, I've decided to record what's happened to me in the journal, writing by the light of my phone. Its battery is at 40%, so I should have enough to last the night, and hopefully, by morning, the dogman will have gone back out, or go deeper into the cave which I suspect is his lair. I don't dare to sleep. I'm sure a wave of tiredness will soon come to me, but I'll just have to fight it. I do not want to die, certainly not at the hands of that unholy cross species creature. Journal Entry 2. I'm currently hiding in a small natural alcove in the lower chamber's rearmost wall, penning what I fear may be my final entry, despite only being my second. The cave floor is a few feet below me, a small drop, but to drop down would nonetheless be a death sentence, because the floor is littered with human bones. There is absolutely no way I can drop down quietly, and it is just beyond the entrance to this chamber, conducting some strange though unquestionably obscene ritual before the altar beside the chamber's entrance. I saw the altar earlier, during my hasty descent into the subterranean chamber of the greater cave system. The altar is a crude thing. An oblong mound of rock over which the height of an animal, I hope an animal, is tautly stretched, and atop this were several crude artifacts, all made of bone and other materials salvaged from once living creatures. There were other objects, what might have been candles, but I didn't stop to closely examine them. The dog man had just awoken, and against my earlier fears he began making his way deeper into the cave, rather than out of it. It was only by luck some momentary lapse of sanity on his part, that I managed to scurry further into the cave. When I saw him tilt his head to the side, as if to listen closely to some unseen speaker, I left my hiding place, carrying the journal and pen in my hands, and fled toward the oval of slightly greater darkness at the end of the cavernous chamber, the entrance to a tunnel, which eventually led down into what I suppose I should call the ritual room. Seeing the recent activity here, Blood stains not faded enough for my liking, clumps of bristle, the half-gnawed limbs of deer and other animals, I hurriedly continued on, hoping to find another passage. There was one, in the back of the abysmal room, and it led down into a small, featureless, and thankfully goreless room. It is here that I've hidden myself, I wasted no time in climbing up onto the little shelf in the wall and rolling in, the journal and pen tucked close to my body. I waited for what felt like hours before turning on my phone's light. I heard the dog man begin conducting his strange, 
bestial, indescribably odd-sounding rites. There were periods of guttural shouting, and others of a mad, psychotic bleeding, as if a goat had been ensnared, stricken mad by some animally incomprehensible horror, and encouraged by torture to shriek out its agonies. But despite how terrifying these frequently alternating phases were, the fewer and shorter periods of a deep, darkly reverent silence were even worse. It was during these that I turned off my light, for fear of being detected, even though I hadn't felt any such vulnerability during the aforementioned cycles of audible insanity. When at last the wickedly ceremonial sound stopped for good, and the subsequent silence stretched on longer than it had before, I climbed out of the alcove, crept up the incline, and peered into the room. I allowed myself only the briefest glimpse before running on tiptoe back down and returning to my claustrophobic sanctuary. As I've already mentioned, there is an altar up there, a slab of rock over which is draped the stretched and dried skin of some animal, with several savage, ritualistic trinkets lying atop its surface. What I hadn't noticed during my initial flight through the room was the object affixed to the rightmost wall, when facing the entrance into the larger sanctuary beyond, and decorated with strips of flesh and hair and other grisly fixtures. There is a very large and semi-complete reproduction of the dog man, an upscaled image of itself, built of many bones, with a multiform head, the various canine features having been taken from several different dogs and wolves, and near seamlessly stitched together to form a single, monstrously composite head. I've never seen something so boldly, blatantly horrific, so suggestively satanic, and immediately removed myself from its abhorrent, though thankfully inanimate, presence. Back in my little hidey hole, I tried to think of what purpose the towering idol could possibly serve to a thing that seemed not just helplessly insane, but perfectly content with being the only one of its kind. It had obviously shown its hatred for other creatures of the natural order, the evidence being the viscera, bones, and flesh left lying carelessly about the altar room, and so I was left stumped, unable to imagine why it would construct such a loathsome, supersized replica of itself, if not for sick, inanimate companionship. My thoughts were interrupted, fortunately or unfortunately, for you to decide, by the return of the dog man, who had apparently gone out to do a little post-ritual hunting, and was now back. I heard the unmistakable sounds of bodies being dropped onto the stony floor, and even more horribly, the pitiful, weak-willed cries for mercy of the people the creature had captured. These pleas were quickly, cruelly snuffed out. There was a series of thuds, and I assumed that the creature had clobbered them over their heads with a rock. This macabre assumption served to both magnify my terror and chill my very soul, so that not even my quickening heart could reheat or re-elevate my frigid and ever-plummeting spirit. There were a few more sounds, so horrible in their suggestions of bloody violence that I refused to devote the pen strokes to describe them, and then the profane, intermittently modulating ritual sounds played out again. The guttural shouting, the insane, feral bleeding, the deathly, unbearably cryptic silence. And then, when I thought the creature would again return to the outside world for some other diabolic purpose, there instead came the sounds of objects rolling down the incline into my sanctuary. At first, I thought that the creature had simply discarded the object he'd used to club the helpless victims. But upon leaning over the edge of my shelf, I saw the ivory crown of a freshly scalped head still glistening in the eerie cave light that had, during the ritual, eerily arisen from the very walls of the chamber and now continues to linger despite the ceremony's cessation. There were other crimson-coated and cadaverous objects, other mutilated fragments of humanity, some entirely picked clean, other